Hello there, bye, this is General Snivy, and welcome to my new Let's Play. Okay, uh, anyway, welcome everybody to Let's Play Final Fantasy VIII. I am playing the Steam re-release of the game on PC, and if anyone has played Final Fantasy VIII, this is not what normally what the title screen looks like. The reason why this is, and the font for the game is also different this time around, is because of the fact that I am using some mods to enhance the experience of the game because the Steam re-release of Final Fantasy VIII along with the original PC release of the game are quite infamous due to the fact that the both the original PC release as well as the Steam re-release of the game 
the music for the game uses MIDI files as opposed to the original that were of much higher quality in the original PlayStation version. So, one of the mods I have active is known as Roses and Wine. What that is, it replaces the entire game's soundtrack and all the MIDI files with the ones that were found in the original PlayStation release. Not only that, I'm also running some other mods that uh, basically change the aesthetics of the game to give it a fresh coat of paint. So basically all the mods I'm running here do not affect gameplay whatsoever, but the only thing they do affect are just cosmetic, and that's just that, cosmetic differences. So... If you uh, have any questions on the mods and what I'm using, and if you want to install them and use them for yourself for your own playthrough of this game, what I highly recommend you do is uh, look up a uh, YouTube video and just uh, search up uh, Final Fantasy VIII Steam Mods. Or, or you can do this instead. If you're in the chat right now, just type in exclamation point and then mods in lowercase, all one word, then Nightbot will direct you to a video that uh, I used to get everything up and running and get everything all set up. I honestly did not want to change the aesthetics too much, but unfortunately, in order to get the mods to run properly, um, I had no choice. I had to go all out. I could have also just played the original PlayStation release as well, but the Steam re-release of the game, I would consider this to be the definitive edition. Minus the little music issue, but again, that's just me. And there are several reasons why I would consider it the definitive version. And one of those reasons is there's a new feature that was introduced with the PC release. I don't know if this was a part of the original PC release or not, but I do know it is a part of the uh, Steam re-release. And I'll get more into that later. There's also a uh, new option called Magic Booster, which gives you a bunch of spells and basically fills up your entire spell book with all kinds of different spells throughout the course of the game. However, it's one of those one and done kind of deals where once you inject yourself with that, then uh, you can't really uh, take it back because it's injected to your save file permanently. Of course, you can always uh, get rid of those uh, spells and use them all up, but uh, once you use them, that's it. I mean, sure, you can still use it over and over again to more or less give yourself unlimited spells. However, there are a certain number of spells that you need to keep within your spell book, and some of them are more useful than others. So with that in mind, let's go and begin a new game of Final Fantasy VIII now. I'll be here. Why? I'll be waiting here. For what? I'll be waiting for you, so... If you come here... You'll find me. I promise.
My god, that intro will never get old. Never. <laughs> One of my favorite intros to a video game of all time. I freaking love it so much. <laughs> Alright, here we go. Time to get this party started. How are you feeling? Okay, I guess. Okay. Take it easy next time you're here. Looks like your eyes are focusing. You should be fine. Say your name for me. Sure thing. I don't know if this was the first Final Fantasy game to allow you to rename your protagonist. By default, your main character is named Squall Leonhart. So, I'm just going to keep it as such. So, let us go ahead and confirm. Why don't you take it easy in training? Next time, you might not be so lucky. Tell that to Cypher. That Cypher won't listen to anyone. Why don't you ignore him? I can't just run away. You want to be cool, huh? Well, don't get hurt in the process. <laughs> Wise words to live by. Let's see. Your instructor is... Quistus. I'll call her now. Just wait here a minute. For the longest time, I never knew how to pronounce her name until I played through World of Final Fantasy. Thank God. Because <laughs> the way it's spelled and the way you say her name is kind of confusing. Anyway, back to this. Quistus, come get your student. Yes, yes. His injury is not serious. It'll probably leave a scar. But a badass one at that. Right. Now please come by. Hello, who are you? Squall, so we meet again. I wonder who that is. I wonder if she'll play a very vital part of the story. <laughs> Only one way to find out, and that is to dive right on in. And, uh, watch as the story unfolds. And Quistus once again looks really disappointed in us. I knew it'd be either you or Cypher. Come on, let's go. Today's the field exam. <laughs> yes, it is. It is a classic. Also, welcome to the stream. Squall, is there something on your mind? Not really. <laughs> What's so funny? funny? No, no, it's not that. I'm just happy. Hmm, gigantic dick. <laughs> nice name. Anyway, welcome to the stream. Just, uh, try to behave yourself, please. Thank you. I feel like I'm beginning to understand my student a little, that's all. I'm more complex than you think. You have no idea. Then tell me. Tell me more about yourself. It's none of your business. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you gotta love being able to control characters during SMV sequences. Most awkward thing. One of the most awkward things about Final Fantasy VIII. But it just makes me enjoy the game that much more. Because even if you move around in the FMV sequence, it doesn't really affect gameplay too much. It's just something you can do. Just for fun things. Good morning, class. Let's start with today's schedule. There seems to have been some rumors flying around since yesterday. Yes, the field exam for seed candidates have, will begin later this afternoon. Ooh. Those not participating and those who failed last week's Britain test are to remain here and study all. Field exam participants will have free time until the exam. Just be sure you're in top condition. Meet in hall, in hall at 1600 hours. I'll announce the team assignments there. Any questions? Oh, and Cypher? 
Do not injure your partner while training. Be careful from now on. Field exam participants, I will see you all later. And Squall, I need to talk to you. Oh great, what does she want right now? <laughs> well, uh... We'll go talk to her later. Right now, let's go check out our desk. Let's see, turn on the power. <laughs> what a pain. <laughs> Uh, anyway, here at your desk, you can view, uh, basically all the basics that you need to learn about this game, including the basics about Garden, which, uh, basically describes the lore of why you're here, what's going on, and even a message from Garden. There's also the school festival committee. We'll, uh, check that out momentarily. Right now, let's check out tutorial. GF data for Squall. GF registration under Squall are GF, Quinskal, Scottle, and Shiva. Or is it Shiva? Either way, confirm and confirm. The tutorial covers all aspects of gameplay. This tutorial can also be accessed through the regular menus at any time during the game. Very true. And here you can uh, view all the different uh, kind of tutorials that are here. These tutorials right here are text-based, so you can view them and basically view how to uh, go about playing through the game and how to uh, how to do things. And as you can see, despite me playing the uh, PC release of the game, um, I do have regular button prompts. That's one of the mods I have installed, where it replaces those god-awful B1, B2, B3, B4, etc. buttons when using a joypad with buttons from a PlayStation controller. So in this case, I'm using a regular DualShock 4 controller connected to the computer via USB. So, yeah. This should, this should uh, more than be sufficient for uh, playing through the game and uh, the buttons should also make things a lot easier when playing through certain parts of the game because trust me not having this mod you can get stuck very easily trying to remember what buttons on your controller correspond to button one button two button three button four and there's no symbols whatsoever so you can't figure that out on your own so that's nice not <laughs> anyway online help our uh like interactive tutorials the only one we have is GF Junction but this will be gone over with us when we head out of here and take the field exam card game this is a side activity that is present within many different Final Fantasy games and this game is no different the name of this uh, card game is known as what is it again uh, Try Disaster I can't remember the name of it off the top of my head, but this is a card game. And at any time you can view the rules of the card game and figure out uh, what does what, how you play the game, how do you win the game, what happens when you win or lose. And it's a pretty simple game in concept, but it's very, very difficult to master. And there are a lot of rules and there is a lot of explanation. As far as the actual card game is concerned, it's entirely optional, but if you want to go for 100% completion, but in, bleh, if you want to go for 100% completion, then you'll have no choice but to go after the card games and play them constantly in order to get the right cards that you want, for the most part. Alright, now let's look at Icon Explanation. This basically describes all the different icons that are uh, a part of the game, such as that weird drop that looks like a raindrop, that's fire for whatever reason. And that crystallized uh, box there is ice, there's thunder, earth, poison, wind, water, and holy. Or holy. Holy crap, that's a lot to take in. And here are all the, uh, all the icons for the different status elements that can be inflicted upon you or your enemies such as death, poison, petrified, darkness, etc, etc. 
here we have uh, what these different icons mean. HP is hit points, STR is strength, VIT is vitality, uh, MAG is magic, SPR is spirit, SPD is speed, EVA is a evade or evasion, hit is hit percentage, luck is just luck. Nothing too fancy about that. And we also have a couple of other icons over here, such as Elemental Attack, Elemental Defense, Status Attack, and Status Defense. We'll get more into details of that later. And trust me, there's a lot to go over. And finally, the final set of icons we have are Junction Ability, Command Ability, Character Ability, Party Ability, GF Ability, and Menu Ability. Each of these icons represent different things. Junction abilities are like uh, HP plus or magic plus, luck plus, etc, etc. Nothing too fancy there. So long as you have a GF equipped with those uh, status boosts and they've learned them, then so long as that person has that particular GF equipped, then those stats will transfer to that character. So long as they have the GF equipped. Then, uh, command ability is, it basically allows you to modify your commands and give you certain abilities. You can have up to three additional commands all at once. By default, you have, uh, three other commands you can automatically equip, but no matter what, you do have to equip a GF in order to do anything other than attack. As far as character ability is concerned, I'm not 100% sure, but I think this uh, gives a particular character who has that GF equipped a special ability that is correspondent to that GF as if they learned it. Party ability is something that affects the entire party. Uh, GF ability is... Okay, I was wrong about the whole junction ability earlier. That applies to GF ability. Junction ability is something else entirely. Menu ability is something you can do in the menus. And trust me, we'll be getting into all the juicy details later. And we also have information for Invocor. We have uh, basic terms and uh, elemental status, menu battle system, etc., etc. And there are so many pages of uh, the different terminologies of what they mean, and trust me, you kind of want to keep this memorized as you go about the game. So, for example, GF stands for Guardian Force. Trust me, you want to keep that in mind for later. And basically, these terminologies tell you uh, what these mean, how does this work, and there's quite a lot that you can learn just from reading text alone. But I feel like it's a better idea just to uh, simply experience the game for yourself and learn the hard way. But hey, that's just me and my personal preference. Let's check out the school festiv festival committee. See if there's anything going on here. Thank you for looking at this page, but there won't be any updates for a while. That's because I, the Guardian Festival Chair, will be leaving Garden. I did not strive to be a CD, and I won't even graduate. I devoted all my time to the Garden Festival, my passion. But in the end, there was no Garden Festival. That's because no one volunteered to help out. I have only myself to blame. I thought I alone could pull it off. I'll be starting a new life, but I sincerely hope someone will take over the Garden Festival Committee. Goodbye, Malam Garden. Lindley Donner. Hmm. Interesting. Don't know what that's about, but, uh, we can come back later, and uh, after a certain point in the game, the school festi festival committee will be populated with some very interesting and juicy info. Okay, let's view about Garden. What's this about? Oh uh, yeah, we can uh, learn about the facility rules, student rules, administration, garden info, CD info, and... Uh, Again, there's a lot to go over, and some of these, uh, or most of them for the most part, do not apply to uh, actual gameplay. They're more so there for basically lore purposes, so you don't even have to read them if you don't want to. 
Dang, why? Let's look at the message from Garden. Um, we have Garden events, cafeteria announcements, disciplinary committee announcements, and library committee announcements. Uh, let's check out Garden events. Let's see. Uh, spring is memorial service, entrance ceremony, CD exam, written and field exam. Summer is the Garden Festival, Summer Vacation, Autumn is Student Sponsor Event, and Winter is Winter Vacation. Kind of like a, an actual school system in real life. <laughs> so that's pretty neat. And uh, Garden Square, what's this? Your opinions are important to us. Yeah, your opinions are important to make our garden a better place. Write them down and place them in the drop box. I got first tre treepies forever, baby. Man, I want to go out with her. Treepy groupy number one. Uh, blah, 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 Sue. Blah, 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 blah. I don't care why I select this. <laughs> okay. Alright, I think that's everything that we need to cover here in the terminal, so... I'm done. <laughs> Again, you can come back to the terminal at any time and uh, view all kinds of different information here. Right now, let's go ahead and talk to Quistus and get this started. You haven't been to the fire cavern yet, have you? You won't be able to take part in today's seed exam if you don't pass the prerequisite. My god, I can't speak! I was going to do go this morning, but Cypher... Do you have a good excuse? Not really. Then let's get going. If you're not too confident yet, you can review your studies at the study panel, which is your desk. I'll be waiting at the front gate, so come down when you're ready. You can access the study panel from your seat. Of course, I've already technically went over this. Anyway, uh... Let's see what you have to say. Along with the instructor trip, trip. Shouldn't it, should anything happen to instructor trip, the trippies will get you back. I don't get it. Perhaps they really love her. I, I'm so jealous. Maybe I should take up the subject too. Uh, who knows? <laughs> Lever floats your boat, dude. All right, let's go and get going. By the way, um. Final Fantasy VIII is, uh, late, I'm late, I'm late! Oh dear. What? Are you okay? There. Hee hee, I'm fine. Sorry, I was kinda in a hurry. Oh yeah, hey, did you just come from that class? Is homeroom over? Yeah, unfortunately. Ooh, ooh. This place is so much bigger than my last garden. Oh, hey, hey! I just transferred here. Do you think you can give me a quick tour of this garden? Um, sure, okay. Woohoo! Alright, let's go! We'll take the elevator to the first floor lobby and I'll show you to the directory. Sounds good to me. And by the way, this girl that is following us right now... She's going to come into play in just a short while. Oh, uh, hey, would you like to have these? My brother gave me these cards, but they're really not a, my thing. You can have them if you like. Um, what? How do you play a card game? Hmm. I think I'd be best to look at the card game explanation and tutorial. I don't know much about it, really. If you want to play cards with someone, talk to them by pressing square. But keep in mind, not everyone is a card player. Oh, and by the way, I don't play, so don't bother challenging me. So, we received seven cards after talking to that guy. Let's see what those cards are. By the way, you can bring up the menu at any time by pushing the triangle button by default. Let's see, uh, items? I think this is, uh, where we can, uh, or not. 
cards is where we can view all the cards we have. Let's see. Pretty interesting card designs. There are ten separate pages with each having a different card entry. In order to play the card game, you do have to have at least one card or a certain number of cards before you can start playing. Though I don't know the exact number, though. So, that is something to keep in mind. Okay. That's the directory. is pretty big. It's a good idea to check where you want to go and select it here. I have a question. How do you use this? Move the cursor and press X to select. Next, I'll give you a quick explanation on the various facilities. Yes, sir! You'll find a dormitory to the north. A majority of the students live in the dorms. There aren't too many students who commute. Yeah, I'm in the dorms too. You can rest and change in there. West of the north block is the cafeteria. There's always a big rush for the hot dogs. You better get used to waiting in line. Got it. I guess the hot dogs are just that freaking good. <laughs> East of the north block is the parking lot. We usually take a garden car when the mission comes up. The front gate is located to the south. That's right. I have to get go meet Instructor Tree, tree at the front gate. Hmm? Huh? What's the matter? Nothing. Next, we have the quad, located in the west block. There's an event being planned there. I know, I know. It's the Garden Festival. It's going to be great. I'm planning to be on the community. Committee. You want to help out, too? Let's just continue. South of the West Block is the infirmary. This is where you go to get treated for your injuries, but a lot of students just come here for advice. What's the doctor's name? Dr. Kanawaki. I apologize if I butchered that name, but Japanese names I can't really read too well. Now the East Block. This is the training center. It is the only facility open at night. It's used for training, and they have real monsters running loose here. If you don't take it seriously, you may end up dead. Just be careful. Okay. South of the East Block is the library. There's a lot of material you can look up here, but the terminals in the classrooms are a lot more efficient. And you already know about the classroom on the second floor, right? Yep, I remember that one. By the way, the headmaster's office is located on the third floor. You need permission to get in. Another question, what's the headmaster's name? Headmaster said, one of many Final Fantasy tropes. That's about it. Anything else? Got it. I'll take that as that's it. Hey, um, are you taking today's seed exam? Yeah. Then maybe I'll see you again later. I've already finished my training at the previous garden. I'm taking the seed exam today, too. Good luck to both of us, huh? Thanks a lot. You're welcome. Well, that was fun. Anyway, say hello to this icon right here. This is a, probably the most important icon in the entire game. This is a save point. Once you touch this, Access the menu and then select save to save your progress. Keep this in mind because there is no autosave in Final Fantasy VIII, no matter what version of the game you play. So for this playthrough, I'm going to put this in slot 2. Go ahead and create a save file right there. And that's another thing I really love about the Steam re-release. The load times are significantly shortened between basically... Anything and everything throughout the entire game, including saving progress, usually that takes about, uh, about five seconds, but here, it's instantaneous. 
and learning from one area to another, usually that takes about another five seconds or so, but again, with the Steam re-release, so much faster. And this is coming from a mechanical hard drive. And technically speaking, this game is being played on a hard drive. I can't imagine if uh, the game loads even faster if you're playing this off of an SSD. But uh, I'm pretty sure it's not. Basically, load times are the same. I'm not too sure. Every single year, you get troublemakers entering. Oh, how I enjoy scolding them. <laughs> Alright. There is something else that I wanted to note too, and that is this game, along with Final Fantasy VII and Final Fantasy IX, don't have uh, three dimensional backgrounds, not like Final Fantasy X onward. Instead, it uses pre rendered graphics and have 3D models running around the pre rendered environment. I don't know if. Yeah, it started with Final Fantasy VII, and VIII improved it significantly, and IX uh, basically threw in its own aesthetic and, and improved it even further. So, yeah. There you go. There's some uh, trivia right there. Perhaps I should go home this weekend. I really should go visit my parents. There is another thing that's worth noting too, and that is this game right here is the first Final Fantasy game I have ever played. And technically speaking, when I first played it on the PlayStation, it wasn't even my copy. It was my, actually my sister's. <laughs> There's a story about that, and I'll go into a uh, I'll go into that later. Right now we have what is known as a draw point. No one can draw right now, but. Uh, as soon as uh, we head out to the field, we will be able to draw. Keep these in mind. Whenever you see a draw point, go to it and grab whatever spells are in there. Just keep in mind, once you collect a spell, then it will take some time before the draw point will become usable again. There are a couple exceptions here and there, especially with some of the more powerful spells, where you can only get, like, so many throughout the course of the playthrough, and then afterwards, you won't be able to get one ever again, so use it wisely. So, yeah. Let's head to the front gate and talk to Glistus. I have a few things to explain before we head off. GFs gives us strength. The stronger the GF, the stronger we become. So, here's a brief explanation on junctioning a GF. And this is the tutorial I was talking about earlier. Even if you view the tutorial beforehand, you will be forced to sit through it again. Junction in Tutorial. Junction enables characters to power up and use abilities. This means... The GF must be junctioned in order to power up and use abilities. Let's begin by junctioning the GF. Right, now, no GF is junctioned. Right now. All other commands in gray cannot be selected yet. Once junction is selected, the GF and magic commands appear. Since no GF is junctioned, magic is displayed in gray. Let's junction the GF. By selecting GF, a GF list appears. Press square to see the abilities possessed by a GF. The abilities are HP Junction, Vitality Junction, etc. Let's choose a GF. When GF Quinsome Toll is selected, its abilities, HP Junction and Vitality Junction, make the stats of HP HP and Vitality Junction appear in white. Match can now be junctioned to HP and Vitality. But since there is currently no magic, we will move on to selecting abilities. There are three command abilities. And two non-command abilities for characters and party. 
total of five abilities can be set. Depending on the GF's abilities, the maximum is four non-command abilities. This means that up to seven abilities can be set. Let's set some abilities. First, select the slot. The top window is for command abilities used during battle. The bottom window is for characters and party abilities. Selecting the top window displays command abilities. And selecting the bottom window displays characters and party abilities. Since there is currently no magic, let's set the command ability draw to get some magic. When, em when an empty slot is chosen, the cursor moves to the right. Select draw to set the command draw. This is how command abilities used during battle are set. Let's add GF and items to the list of command abilities. Now GF and item are set. Let's set a non-command ability by moving the cursor down. A character's ability is displayed. Now select magic plus 20%. Select an empty slot, and select magic plus 20%, and it's as simple as that. Abilities have now been set. This concludes the tutorial, thank you and good luck. Good luck and have fun. Everything okay up, up till now? You can always check back by accessing tutorial from the menu. Yep, everything's good here. Once we get to the fire cavern, I'll explain how to junction magic. Use the command draw during battles to stock magic from your enemies. Be sure to have some stocked. Ready to go? The fire cavern used for the test is located east of here. Another thing that's worth pointing out too is when speaking to certain characters, locations will typically be highlighted in blue. Keep this in mind because those are some very, very important pieces of information. So, with that in mind, let's head out. And another thing that's worth noting too is that when you're out in the field, you can save progress at any time without having to be anywhere near a save point. So, it's not a bad idea to just uh, try to save progress as much as humanly possible. So, for right now, I'm just going to go ahead and junction some uh, abilities. And, by the way, you can set these abilities in any order you see fit. So, for example, if you like uh, having draw gear, you can put the uh, draw gear instead. Or, if you're like me, I typically roll with GF on the second slot, draw or magic in the th third slot, and the final slot, I put items. Items are extremely important in this game. You have no freaking idea. <laughs> items can save your skin more times than you can count. So, here we go. Let's see what's right here. And another thing that's worth noting too is GF's uh, learned abilities as you go about through the game. Right now, they're sitting at level 1. There is one more thing worth noting too is that if you didn't pick up your GFs at the at your front desk when you started the game and gained control of Squall, Quistus will uh, give you those GFs after talking to her at the front gate. So for right now, uh, let's go ahead and grab, uh, pull up the GF menu. This is the Guardian Force menu. You can view all the GFs that you currently have in your possession and who is with you throughout the course of the game. And here you can view the stats of that GF and what they're currently set to learn. And speaking of learning, if you select learn and hit the X button twice, you can view whatever abilities that the particular GF can learn. Items that are great are abilities of which you can have that GF learn. So, in order to have GFs learn abilities, they have to gain the, what is known as ability points. Ability points are earned from defeating enemies. For right now, uh, I think I'm going to go ahead and select uh, 
boost because this doesn't take too much AP to learn. For one and two, it's pretty dang important to learn boost as soon as you humanly, as soon as you possibly can. So I'm gonna do the same thing for uh, Shiva right here. And by the way, any AP that you earn earn from one ability, you can transfer you can't transfer it over to another ability. But any AP that you've learned, I mean any AP that you've gained up to that point to learn a particular ability, uh, it'll stay there so long that it'll stay there. Basically forever. So let's say for example I earned uh, 5 AP for boost, but then I decided to say, hey, I kind of want to start working on learning Spirit plus 20%. Well, I can do this, and any future AP I gain goes towards this, as opposed to boost. So, if I earn enough, enough AP to learn Spirit plus 20%, and then I decide to go back to boost, then... The AP I've earned up to that point for that ability stays at 5, and then I can continue to work on that from there. So, it's a bit of a... It's a bit of a AP management, but, uh... Whatever you choose to do is entirely up to you. By the way, there is another, uh, kind of unique quirk when it comes to GFs. Believe it or not, each of these GFs have a compatibility level with certain characters. The higher the compatibility, the better that GF will perform when used by that character. This uh, quirk is invisible to the player, and you can only uh, view this information online. So, that is something to keep in mind. Oops, wrong slot. Meant to select slot two. Alright, here we go. Let's head on out and get ready to... Get into our first fight! Say hello to enemy number one, the fly. Squall, you still remember? The R1 is the trigger. Pull it just as you strike. Same for Razazuka. Sounds good to me. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, draw trigger option. But anyway, after defeating an enemy, you'll gain experience for all active party members. So, there we go. We can sometimes earn items upon defeating an enemy, so there we are. And depending on how strong the enemy is, we gain some free people or GFs. Whether they're junctioned or not, I think, then they should still receive AP nonetheless, no matter what. Oh my, we have a group of flies this time. Whenever you uh, draw magic from an enemy, you can choose to stop the fire or stop that particular magic spell, or you can choose to cast it for free. If you choose to cast it, Cast the spell which you draw from the enemy and deal some magic damage. Magic works kind of uh, strangely with the final dance of As with the draw system, you have to draw magic from enemies. This does take up a turn upon doing this, so that is something you should be But it's a good idea to draw as much as you possibly can from as many enemies as possible. Keep and synchronize with the server. I think what that means is, uh, in the Steam re-release of this game, in the Steam re-release there are achievements that you can earn. So, uh, there are several achievements that you can earn in this game. 
I have earned a good majority of the achievements already, though I haven't earned all of them. There are still some that I have yet to earn, and I still need to work on. Okay, I think we're pretty good here, so at this point, it may be a good idea to try to save progress and select the wrong game folder again. Um, never gonna get used to that. Okay, let's head into the cave. Okay, junctioning magic. Now pay attention. I'll be explaining how to utilize the magic you have stopped. And so we are immediately thrown into the junctioning magic tutorial. By junctioning magic, you can raise the character status or stats. If the GF has learned the ability to junction onto stats, that particular stat will be displayed in white. By selecting Junction here, the GS and Magic Commands will appear. You are able to Junction Magic by selecting Magic. When Magic is selected, a list of Magic appears. Use the cursor to select which stats to Junction. When Strength is selected, choose a Magic with the cursor you can see how the stat value changes with each magic. When a magic is selected, the magic will be displayed next to the stat and the value will change. Only one magic can be assigned to each stat. However, there is no need to junction magic manually one by one. Select Auto after junctioning. Auto junctions magic automatically. There are three commands to choose from. Attack favors strength. Magic favors magic. And defense favors raising HP. And defenses. Thus, magic can be junctioned easily by using auto. For example, let's select the attack junction. Magic has been junctioned to favor strength. This concludes the Magic Junction tutorial. When you draw a new magic, try experimenting with it when you when you're when you junction. This is how you become stronger. Okay, ready to go? Oh! You know how to use your gun blade? I guess I'll review it. Uh, it's better to go over it. The status screen displays each character's basic data. The first status screen shows stats such as HP, Strength, etc. The second screen shows all the status and elemental related information. The third status screen shows GF relation information. The fourth status screen shows you limit break information. Squall's gun blade settings can be changed in the limit break screen. There are two settings, Gunblade Auto as a Zulken Indicator. If you select Gunblade Auto to On, the Razuken hits automatically without having to press R1. I would keep that off. However, a perfect may not be possible with this option. You must select Off. And honestly, it's not that hard. It really isn't. And press R1 manually at the right time. If the Razuka indicator is turned off, the indicator will not display during Razuka. If the gunblade auto option is turned on, the Razuka indicator is turned off automatically. That's all for Squall's limit break. Alright, let's go! Speaking of limit breaks, each character has their own unique limit break. As Quistis uh, pointed out, Squall's limit break is the Razenzuken. And again, I would keep Gunblade Auto to off and Razuken Indicator to on. For special, this basically uh, displays what special ability will be activated at random at the end of the uh, limit break. Depending on Squall's weapon, 
depending on what variant of weapon he has in his possession, then the special will change, and more and more specials will be added as you upgrade the gunblade throughout the course of the game. So, there's Squall's limit break. Quistis's limit break works a bit differently. Her limit break is uh, blue magic. She can learn blue magic by uh, using various items on her. As far as what items are concerned, uh, that I'm not too sure off the top of my head. There are a lot of different items and a lot of different combinations and a lot of abilities for Quistis to learn for her limit break. So how limit breaks work is if a character is in the yellow health range, so if their health text is yellow, then that means they're uh, almost on death's doorstep. At this point, uh, there's a chance where the attack command will give you an option to activate the, uh, the limit break. However, this uh, chance of happening is almost random. However, the lower your HP is, the more likely you'll trigger the uh, limit break opportunity. So it's kind of a risk versus reward kind of scenario. So that's pretty nice. You just have to decide when would be a good time to heal and when to not heal and instead just unleash limit breaks like a freaking madman and pray to God that you end up killing the enemy. <laughs> uh, it's a bit strategic, but uh, there's a bit of strategy when it comes to utilizing limit breaks, that's for sure. And this is something else I have not gone over yet, and this is configuration. The configuration menu, you can uh, choose to adjust the controller options. So, normal is just the normal controls of how you go about playing the game. You can also customize the button layout for the controller as well. And if you hit X to customize the button layout, you can then uh, choose what buttons do what and uh, basically how everything works. So, there we go. For whatever reason, the uh, runaway controls for this iteration are assigned to the start and select button. Honestly, it's better to play the Steam re-release of this game with a PlayStation controller than it is with an Xbox controller. And the reason why is because the button layout on the Xbox controller is different versus the PlayStation. By the way, the uh, button command to end is wrong for some reason for this button layout. To end, you just push start, or in this case, if you're using the DualShock 4, it's the options button. So I'm going to leave this on normal. Cursor, you can set the cursor to initial, which is the attack command automatically, or you can set it to memory, so whatever you had it on last, when you last did your action, it'll be set to there. ATB is active time battle. You can change this from active to wait. Change this to wait if this is your first time playing through, so whenever you're going through options and stuff, when you're charging up your ATB cage, the battles proceed automatically, but if uh, your ATB gauge is full and you're able to choose an action, then the game temporarily stops in time so you can uh, choose your actions more carefully and thoroughly. And scan, what this is, this is a, a setting for close-up animation. So if you scan your enemy, if you set this to once, for the initial scan, it'll do a close-up of the enemy and do the full animation. However, if you set this to always, it'll always do that, no matter how many times you scan the enemy. Camera movement is how sensitive you want the camera to be. Battle speed is how fa fast you want the battles to be. So if you are uh, a bit stressed out, you can try lowering the battle speed a little bit. So that way, you can easily uh, readjust your strategy at a more decent pace, but at the same time, this also comes with the cost of battles taking longer. 
Let's leave that something to keep in mind. Battle messages you can see, you can set uh, how fast you want the messages to uh, co come in and then remove themselves. Field messages, you can set how fast you want the text to come about on screen. I would keep this at default, so that way everything disappears all at once. Sound, you can adjust the sound for the game. I think this applies to music as well. I could be wrong. Then again, I feel like maybe this turns off sound effects only and leaves the music alone. But, uh, not 100% sure on that. But for right now, though, uh, before we, uh, head into the cavern, I'm actually gonna save one more time. Not in the wrong slot again. Just so that way, if something goes wrong, we won't have to sit through the tutorial again. Holy crap, that would be a pain. Because there's no way to skip tutorials in this game, which is unfortunate. Hello, how y'all doing? Can I talk to you please? Objective, to obtain a low level GS, a seed member must support. Are you ready? Yes. I'm ready. I'm your support. Instructor number 14, Twistus Tree. Select a time limit. Choose one suited to your abilities. Challenging yet reasonable. So, for your first playthrough, um, I would highly recommend setting this to 40 minutes so that way you have plenty of time to grasp the controls and everything else in between. So, for the early parts of the game, the seed exam works like this. This is a bit complicated and out of the past 19 years that this game has been released, it hasn't gotten any simpler. I have done some research on the seed exam and how you can score a high score and get the best rank possible. So for any veterans of Final Fantasy VIII, you may want to adjust the time limit to say like 10 or 20 minutes. And there's actually a pretty interesting way you can uh, obtain the highest score guaranteed in the original PlayStation release, but not so much here in the uh, Steam re-release. So, there is one more thing worth noting too, is if you run out of time in any circumstance for the most part, then it's an instant game over. So, whatever time limit we select, we kind of have to complete our task within that time limit. So, just to give myself a little bit of a, a little bit of a leeway, I'm going to set the time to 20 minutes. Very well, good luck. And the time limit begins upon the, entering the cage and uh, getting things started. My job is to support you in battle. Everything else is up to you. Fine. Welcome to the Fire Cave, the first dungeon. The first of many dungeons. You know, the boys often choke on this test when they come with them. I guess my charm makes them nervous. Whatever. I'm just kidding. Trying to keep you relaxed, that's all. Sounds good to me. Anyway, the reason why you could possibly run out of time here is due to enemy encounters. And another thing too is towards the very end of the dungeon. Let's draw a new cell. And we got thunder. Not too bad. I think we're gonna draw a thunder as well for slow. That way. He has some thunder stomped up as well. So as soon as the time limit begins, the time limit will continue to count down whether you're in battle, running around on the field, or you're strolling around in menus. So, no matter what, if you run out of time, no matter what happens, it's game over. For the most part. Again, there are a couple exceptions where uh, that's not so much the case. But, in this instance, if you run out of time, then it's all over. So, for fire, this is the first of many draw points. 
I think I'm gonna give this to Squall. There we are. Nice. Tank fire. Anyway, the reason why I decided to select 20 minutes as opposed to 10 minutes is so I can go over all the dialogue here. Bob, an elemental monster. Use an ice attack on these. Check the monster's weakness with scan. Basically, Twistus was informing us how the whole scan thing works. If you choose to use scan, that's entirely up to you. It's not a bad idea to uh, use scan every now and again. But uh, again, if you want to use scan, you do have to have the badge command available. So, if you select GF instead of attack, their HP bar is displayed over your own, so any damage that that character receives damages the GF rather than the characters in the cells. This can be useful for surviving really big attacks, but if the GF uh, falls in battle, then uh, they will not be usable until you heal them in some way, shape, or form. Alright. After a certain amount of time, the chaos goes off, and then they execute the fireworks. Each chaos has their own unique battle animation and their own attack. They look extremely powerful, but uh, some chaos are better than others. There we go. Enemies destroyed. And look at that. What's this level up? Nice. Excellent! Our GF's learned beast, and one of them actually leveled up to level 2, so that's pretty sweet. Alright, for the next uh, command, I'm gonna have uh, that guy learn uh, Card, because Card is a very, very powerful and useful command ability. And I think for this, I'm gonna set this to uh, I Magic RF, which is a menu ability. And by the way, when you're in the menus, you can uh, view how much time you have left on the clock by looking at the lower right hand corner of the screen. And anytime you're running around on the field, the amount of time you have left is displayed on the top right hand corner of the screen. Oh, hello, we have a new enemy. That sounds really, really useful. So they'll have stock up with the lizard for small as well. Five lizards, that's not too bad. I wonder what this guy is used to. Well, uh, irrelevant. Dead. <laughs> Well, that was a pretty low-level encounter, but uh, there is one o uh, there is one more quirk that uh, I didn't really know about until recently with Final Fantasy VIII, and that is, as your party gets stronger, the enemies too get stronger. So essentially, they level up with you. Why? I have no idea. Funny enough, this quirk is also a part of the last remnant and its battle system. So, why is that the way it is? I have no clue, but whatever. It just makes things that much more challenging and more fun. Okay. Alright, welcome to the final pinnacle moment here. And at this point, I think I'm going to go ahead and set a timer on my phone for myself. And I'm going to set this to roughly 13.30. And I'm going to start this timer at the 13.30 mark. So that way... There we go. That way, we can uh, get to the next thing. I guess I was right. You and Cypher are in a class of your own. You both have amazing uh, skills. Blah, blah, blah. 
point read that. Okay. Oh well. The reason why I set a timer on my phone is because we're at the end of the dungeon already. So yes, this uh, old fire cave here is a very short dungeon. Very, very short. There are plenty of enemies and enemy encounters that you need to keep in mind as you go about this. Alright. So with that in mind, let's head in. Okay, this is it. Are you ready? Whatever. <laughs> you seem confident enough. But overconfidence can really lead to Here we go, time for the first major boss fight, and this is against GF is great. A reoccurring uh, elemental idolat monster throughout the course of the entire Final Fantasy series. Okay, here we go. Here is uh, how magic works. As you're drawing magic, you gain a certain amount of magic. If you uh, choose to uh, As you're drawing magic spells, you don't have MP, instead you have a certain number of spells. So, for example, I have had uh, five lizards. I'm going to scan past scan here, just so we can do the uh, information on the free. Here's the close up I was talking about. It's free. Fire GF uses fire magic. It's a strong opponent, but as it is a part of Guardian's exam, or Guardian's exam, not impossible to defeat. You can also view uh, what their weakness is, what they absorb, and their level and their current HP. You can also view uh, other stats such as their strength, their defense, and spirit, evasion, and that's about it. If you want to view this information again, you do have to uh, scan the enemy again. So that is something to keep in mind. Boom. Honestly, I probably impute humans! Ow! So anyway, as I was trying to say, if, uh, I probably should have set the time instead of uh, 20 minutes to maybe 10 minutes. Getting through this pretty dang quickly. And that's good. Okay, let's go ahead and cure. Cure is probably your best friend when it comes to any form of, the, of uh, spells ever. Also, cure is good. Okay, how boost works is you have to essentially remove the display by holding the select button on PlayStation. They have Shiva? So anyway, as I was trying to say, you have to remove your uh, heads up display and as the GF is executing their animation, animation for their attack and winding up, you need to remove the heads up display by pushing and holding select, and then start mashing the square button until uh, the attack finishes. The attack, uh, the attack boost command can, uh, be, can boost the attack power anywhere from a negative number up to 255 or something to that extent. Just whatever you do, don't push the square button. Red exit here. Just stop pushing the button right away. Otherwise, you'll drop the attack power that you boosted up to that point all the way back down to 75. In which case, that would uh, mean that the attack power for the attack drops. So it's kind of a risk for reward. Now that is very human. As you can see, 
the uh, instead of Squall receiving the damage, his GF received the damage instead when Squall was attacked. It's a pretty good idea to have it so uh, the GF takes really strong attacks, so that way the caster will survive. Trust me, we want to keep this in mind for the course of the attack. Sometimes it may not be a bad idea to just simply not worry about boots whatsoever and then just uh, concentrate on the. Uh, just concentrate on the uh, unleashing the attack and figuring out what you need to do next. Not too sure how much uh, HP this guy has left. If I have to guess, a pretty good amount left. boss, you typically don't receive any experience. So, after defeating a freak, we get G Returner and a freak's card, which is pretty sweet. Also, a ton of AP for GFs as well. And we can rename our GFs as we acquire them. And since we have six minutes left on the clock, let me go ahead and explain this quirk. Where, uh, upon finishing the uh, name entry screen. You can sit here for the remainder of the time limit and get the best score possible on the PlayStation version. Even if the timer hits zero, you're fine. But, and this is a very big but, in the Steam re-release of this game, they modified this so that exploit is no longer possible, mostly. So essentially what you have to do instead is you kind of, if you set the time limit to very high, like say 40 minutes, holy crap, why would you set it that high? Unless you're really incompetent with your skills. But uh, anyway, um, if you set the time limit to say uh, a pretty decent amount and you still have a good amount of time left, then it's wise to just sit here on the name entry screen until uh, a certain amount of time passes. So essentially, in order to get the best rank, for this part of the field exam, what you have to do is, for the amount of time you have left, it's not judged on how much time you have remaining, but more so uh, how much time you took. So, the more time you took to defeat a street and uh, confirm his name, the more points you get upon the seed exam. Well, in order to get the most amount of points possible, you have to confirm Efreet's name with seven seconds or less left on the clock. If you let the timer hit zero in the Steam version, then all points that you have normally earned result in a zero. So you would earn no points whatsoever. So essentially, what I mean by this is how this works is the more time you have left on the clock upon confirming a freak's name on the name entry screen, the less points you will receive upon completing the seed exam. As strange as that sounds, that's uh, how it works for this game. If they remake this game, they're probably going to end up making it so it's the other way around. I don't know. But maybe that's the reason why they gave you uh, a time limit choice where you can choose to take on the, the cavern with uh, either 10 minutes, 20 minutes, 30 minutes, or 40 minutes. For any casual playthrough, I would normally select 40 minutes, but uh, since I haven't played this game in a while, I figured I would uh, try to sit here for, and try to go at this 
within 20 minutes. Honestly, I feel like that was not a bad idea because it gives me a little bit of a buffer in case the encounters get a little bit too hectic or too extreme. And it also uh, allows me to gain some well-needed experience for not only uh, my GFs, but also myself and Quistus as well. Trust me, experience is key. And it's very, very important to make yourself as strong as possible, especially for late game and end game. Because some of the uh, obstacles that we'll be facing later on, they, uh, they'll get really, really tough. And yeah, that's not going to be a fun time. So we have about two minutes left on the clock. Technically speaking, according to my phone, we have about two minutes and ten seconds. So, might as well sit here for the next two minutes. <laughs> when the timer hits like like five seconds, five seconds left on the clock, then I'm gonna hit the confirm button. <sighs> the reason why I'm doing this is so I can get the best possible score out of this. I'm gonna try my best to get as high of a rank as I possibly can. Though there's no guarantees that I'm going to be able to max the rank out. And trust me, you want to get your uh, seed rank to be as high as humanly possible at the end of the exam. That way you'll be able to essentially receive the biggest payout that you can receive. So, how this works is upon completing the seed exam, you will uh, receive a rank based on score. And they're determined on uh, certain attributes. These can be uh, found out what they are, what they mean, and how to go about certain actions when you are uh, when you're going about this exam. You can find all this information on the Final Fantasy Wikia. I'm dead serious. All this information can be found there. It details all of the uh, different requirements and. Uh, Basically, all of the amount of times or how many points that you get, depending on your actions, what you do, and uh, basically everything else in between. Very, very important to uh, keep those times in mind, especially for time limit based activities. So, we're getting close to uh, our goal here, so. Uh, Around five seconds remaining, I'm going to go ahead and hit confirm. Now, there we go. And with that, we finish with four seconds remaining. There isn't much time, but let me go over this real quick. Good, you got yourself a GF. If you junction that GF, you'll be able to use the Elemental J ability. Here's an explanation on elements. Junctions can change basic parameters such as strength and magic as well as... Elemental parameters! By junctioning a GF with elemental junction ability, as magic is junctioned, the E L dash A slash D slot above the HP turns white, indicating an elemental junction. When left is selected or pushed left on the D-pad or analog stick, the elemental junction screen appears. Elemental junction works like other junctions. First select a junk a stack to junction. Conjunction junction. What is your function? <laughs> then choose a magic to finish the junction. However, non-elemental magic like here cannot be junctioned. Elemental junction affects attack and defense directly. Junctioning to elemental attack links that element to a character's attack. The percent indicates how much of the attack's damage is linked to the element. 
At the maximum value of 100%, the attack becomes entire, entirely elemental. In the example, ice is set at 50%. This means that damage, that damage only increases by 50%. When junctioning to elemental defense, the damage from that element is reduced. Reduced reduction of damage is shown in percentage. At 100%, damage is reduced to zero. In the example, fire damage is reduced to 20% because elemental defense is at 80%. A green star is displayed when the value goes over 100%, indicating that the damage is absorbed instead. In this stage, you can absorb the amount of damage indicated in percentage. In the example, 50% of fire damage is absorbed. Multiple magic types can be junctioned to elemental defense, depending on the GF's ability. Junctioning multiple types of the same elemental for a cumul cumulative effect. Try junctioning different magic to check the effect. You can also select auto to automatically junction the most effective elemental magic. This concludes the elemental junction tutorial. There's a lot of fire elemental monsters here, so junction blizzard to use elemental attack. You'll have an easier time with fire em elemental enemies. And that is very true. The whole junction thing is really, really complicated, but it is uh, something that can be your, it can be considered your most powerful asset in any given battle throughout the course of the game. And you can essentially break the system by junctioning the right spells with the right uh, slots. Meaning you can become essentially God and completely plow through the entirety of the game. But uh, there's no challenge in that. <laughs> Honestly, there isn't. But uh, since I did junction uh, a... Uh... Okay, what the deuce? Uh, I did junction... I did not. Okay. <laughs> that was stupid of me. No wonder I couldn't junction anything as far as magic. Okay. 1%. That's just uh, how much uh, blizzards I have <laughs> at this moment. But again, I can always make this so uh, I have 8 pages full of magic of all different kinds. And by the way, as I stated, you can only carry up to eight pages worth of magic. And if you happen to find a new spell and you have no other slots, then uh, you will have to make room for new spells. So, yeah, that is something to keep in mind. I'm going to put Strength to Fire and Spirit. I think I'm going to put that to uh, something else. I... Nothing really of value here. Can I do the same thing for Quistus? I can. Can't really junction a, uh, anything too spectacular here. I can put Scan here and uh, increase their stats by one for magic, but uh, is it really worth it? Eh, not really. Although it can make a difference sometimes. I honestly find uh, if it doesn't increase it by much, then it's probably not worth equipping. But that can be. Anyway, now that that's done, it's time to head on out of here and get ready for the final part of the speed exam. So let's do this. Damn! <laughs> Damn, Squall. What a wreck face to kick ass. have to do now is just make our way to the exit. There's another uh, thing that I've not mentioned, and this also ties to load times as I've mentioned before, how they're so freaking fast. 
Brawling is a lot faster now, along with uh, loading into battles. So when you're uh, loading into battles on the original PlayStation release, it would take roughly 10 seconds or so for the battles to start and load. And the game temporarily freezes for about 3 seconds as the battle initiates. But in the Steam re-release, uh, the battles begin instantly. So, that is sweet. Just like that. So, you don't need to worry about the game freezing at all. And besides, playing a game like this isn't too demanding on your system. But, you should still have a pretty decent hardware if you want to play. Magician. So what that is, Achievement Progress is, it tracks uh, how close you are to earning certain achievements and certain milestones. So for example, Magician uh, describes uh, how many times you draw from an enemy, how many spells you draw from an enemy. And believe me, the draw system is most important piece of the whole battle system in the entire game. But of course, you can always bypass this completely with the use of the magic booster with the Steam re-release. So, if you don't want to worry about drawing from every enemy you see, then by all means, use the magic booster, enhance your powers to maximum overdrive, and just completely wreck everyone and everything. Drop below a certain threshold, your strength or whatever you have a junction to also decreases. So it's important to keep an eye on what spells you have junction and which ones you don't. It's a good idea to try to save spells that you don't have that you have junction as opposed to the ones you do have junction. So that way you can get the most benefits and the most bang for, out of your buck for uh Drawing certain spells and uh, enhancing your stats. Trust me, it's worth it. Okay. So there's bugs. How are you? Prepare to die. You may be wondering right now, why am I not to wipe out all the enemies on the screen, I'm just flat out attacking everyone. Well, the reason for this is, I'll be getting into this a little bit later, this is one of the quirks with Steam. And again, more details will be coming out upon completion of the exam. Now, yeah. more enemies destroyed. Another M-Stone piece. Hmm, nice. Shiva has learned a new ability. And thankfully, whenever the uh, do learn an ability, or they gain the proper amount of uh, AP to learn a new ability, a new ability is randomly selected. So, uh, that's pretty nice. So you don't have to keep going back into the menus to uh, figure out which, uh, which uh, abilities you should select for a GF, so that way AP is completely wasted. As far as what I'm going to have Shiva learn next, I think I'm going to have her learn Spirit plus 20%. This may require more AP to learn, but uh, it will be uh, useful, trust me. I guess that's another thing that I have not yet mentioned, and that is 
any mods that you've installed with the uh, Final Fantasy VIII. Where you would normally go to download the mods, they would uh, tell you to disable Steam overlays, and that way the game just crash. And trust me, that's the last thing you want, especially if you're making a huge trek. And you completed a lot of stuff within a long period of time. If you haven't saved recently, then, uh, unfortunately, if the game crashes, then, uh, that's not gonna really help you very much, which is unfortunate. Alright, we're back in Balam Garden. Well done. Let's see. I thought there was something else I needed to go over with you before you take the seed exam. Oh yes, taking care of your GF. This is something you have to watch out for. GF Tutorial A GF will level up as it gains experience, EXP, and, er, and learn new abilities by gaining AP, Ability Points, as I talked about before. For, from experience and AP, experience gained from battles automatically level up the GF. While AP gained during battle can be distributed to learn different abilities. Decide how to distribute the points. Let's go over how a GF can learn different abilities. Select GF from the menu to display the GF acquired. When Shiva is selected, Shiva's stats are shown. This depends. This displays its experience, level, and compatibility between characters, etc. But by selecting Learn, Shiva's ability list is displayed. Abilities in white, such as Strength J, are abilities already learned. Abilities in gray have not been learned yet. The first number in gray shows the AP spent towards learning. The second number shows the AP required to complete. Vitality J shows the shows that 50 AP are required, of which zero AP have been spent. In order to learn the ability Elemental Attack J, move the cursor to Elemental Attack J. And confirm. Elemental Attack J will then be displayed on the left under Learning. From here on, all AP gained will be used for Elemental At Attack J. When all 168 gear gained, Elemental Attack J is learned. Once an ability is learned, AP will automatically move to an ability not yet learned. With each abil learned ability comes a different set of abilities to learn. The order of learning affects the GF's power. Therefore, it is recommended to return to the screen to set the next ability. This concludes the tutorial. Thank you, good luck, and have fun. Now change into your uniform and assemble at the first floor lobby. Sounds good to me. Alright, here we go. At this point, Quistus has temporarily left the party, but she will be back later. So any active, all active party members will, uh, in this case Squall, will be a part of the par main active party. But uh, the status of uh, other party members are displayed here. For this game, you can have a maximum number of three party members active at one time. All other party members are all on standby, but cannot uh, be uh, switched uh, 
they can't really be switched out at will. The switch screen, how this works is, for this you can uh, choose to exchange junctions that are set between certain characters. For example, if I wanted to, I could uh, exchange uh, Squall's current uh, set junction abilities for Quistus, and her abilities would transfer to Squall's, and Squall's would transfer to Quistus. That's not the only thing you can do here. You can also switch party members. But uh, as you can see here, the switch members is grayed out. And this is going to be grayed out for quite a while, so that's something to keep in mind. Alright. I believe that is everything as far as junctioning and everything else is concerned. So all there's left to do now is return to our dorms, change our clothes, and get ready for the next part of the exam, and where the fun of this game truly begins. <laughs> so again, uh, save your progress as often as humanly possible. Trust me, you want to do this. Because you never know what's going to come at you out of left field. Alright, let's head to the dormitory and change our clothes. The directory is very useful to act as a shortcut. The shortcut is used for uh, basically... Uh, it's basically used to allow you to go from one part of the garden to another very quickly. Just keep in mind you do have to go to the directory every time. And I'm not too sure about this, but I feel like the directory will become inactive and will not be used ever again at a certain point, and this is, uh, very early. So, make use of it as long as you can. Alright, now it's time to begin the next part of the seed exam. So, with your seed uniform on, this is very important. Do not socialize, do not be a human being, and don't do anything but robotic things. Follow your orders to attain. I am dead freaking serious when I say this, too. Because any and all actions that, uh... Basically, any actions that, uh, aren't, uh... Strictly, uh, C code... Will be deducted from your score. Trust me, this can be really frustrating if you're going for a high C rank. But, for any filthy casual players, this doesn't really matter all that much. Just saying. Squall, over here! I'll be announcing the squad assignments for the exam now. Let's see, you'll be with... Zell Ditched. Quite a lively fellow. Lively? <laughs> He's just loud. Can't I switch members? I'm afraid that's not possible. Over here, Zell. Way to be overzealous, am I right? <laughs> okay, I'll stop now. Whoa, I'm with you? <laughs> oh, Squall's reaction. Zell's limit break settings can also be changed in the status screen. If dual auto is turned on, the limit break dual will execute automatically. The limit break moves listed on the screen are selected randomly. That's all for Zell's limit break. And honestly, it's not a bad idea to turn it on if you uh, really want to. But I'm probably going to leave it off. You don't get along with Cypher, do you? Her, he whooped you pretty bad this morning. We aren't fighting, we were training. I bet you he... I bet you he doesn't think so. Look, Cypher's just being a pain in the ass. All of you have to do... All you have to do is ignore him. <laughs> That's none of your, none of your business. <coughs> Excuse me, but... That Cypher you're talking about? He's your squad leader. 
Say what? It can't be changed. Cypher, are you here? <laughs> he isn't even changed into his proper uniform. Wow. Fujin and Rain tagging along as usual. Guess that makes up the whole disciplinary committee. You're the squad leader. Good luck to you. Instructor. I hate it when people wish me luck. Why? Save those words for a bad student that needs them, eh? <laughs> okay, then. Good luck, Cypher. <laughs> oh, bird! Add instructor trick to the list. The list? What is it? Well, then. You're all assigned to Squad B. I'll be the instructor in charge. Teamwork is the utmost importance. Let's get through this exam, everyone. Listen up. Teamwork means staying out of my way. It's a Squad B rule. Don't you forget it. Everyone's here? Hello, Sid. It's been a while, everyone. How's everyone doing? This exam will involve 12 members of Squad A through D. You will be proceeding to a real battlefield. Obviously, the battles are for real. No shit. Life and death, victory and defeat, honor and disgrace. Each of these go hand in hand. There's only one way or the other. How about it? Are you still up to it? Up for it. Can't read today. You'll be, you'll be accompanied by nine seed members. Should you fail, these members shall get the job done. They always do. Well, that's one less to worry about. No. That, well, that's one less worry on your mind. The pride of Balam Garden, the elite mercenary for seed. Learn from them, obey their commands, and accomplish the mission. Prove yourselves worthy of becoming a member of Seed. Best of luck. Thanks, man. I wonder why uh, Sid is pixelated in this part here. I wonder what that's about. Well, whatever. As I said, don't talk to anyone throughout the course of the mission. Unless you're instructed to do so. Just saying. Otherwise, points will be deducted. Okay. Yo, Squall, show me your gun blade, will ya? Uh, come on, man. Uh, just a peek. No. Fine. Yeah, yeah. Why you been so selfish, Scrooge? Say something, will ya? What's on your mind? Nothing. Nothing. <laughs> Stop that, it's annoying. Chicken wuss. What did you call me? <laughs> Knock it off. <sighs> well, this car ride's certainly taking a while. Instructor? Who was that girl in the infirmary this morning? Was someone there? I didn't notice anybody. 
Is there a problem? No, not really. This is great. I have chicken wuss and a guy who just reached puberty in my squad. <laughs> and also, my green screen's freaking out. Excuse me. Okay. Well, in this instance, welcome to driving in Final Fantasy VIII. Believe it or not, you can drive uh, vehicles in this game. So, basically, how to drive is not very straightforward. You hold square to go forward, circle to go backwards, and to get in and out of the vehicle, you push the X button. And you steer with the directional buttons, and select changes your point of view. Or, in this case, it brings up the map. You can bring up a globe map, and a map of the entire world, and basically uh, another map which shows you all the different locations and where you're standing currently, and you can make it go away as well. And again, if you want to turn the camera while in the field, just push and hold either the R1 or L1 buttons to turn the camera left and right, uh, respectively. Already at our destination. So that's the vessel? Ain't no turning back now. You huh? You scared too? Hey, you guys are are the last. Hurry up and get in. Don't disappoint me now. Hmm, that doesn't sound good. Come on, move it! Don't want to miss our ride. Hurry, Squall! We'll do. Okay, in we go. Alright, time to begin the mission. Basically. We first need to go over the mission, what this entails, and how we're going to go about doing it. Right, what's this? Well, these are the members of Squad B. Nice to meet you. Pleased to meet you. I don't even know what this symbol means. Perhaps it's a salute of some sort? Whatever. Cypher, how many times has it been now? Oh, I just love these exams. I'll explain the current situation and the mission. Okay, Sue. Be seated. Our client for this mission is the Dola Dunk Duke Don Palmer. Whatever. How you say that name, I have no idea. A request from Seed was made 18 hours ago. Dolet has been under attack by the G Army since about 72 hours ago. 49 hours into the battle, Dolet abandoned their position to their in the inner city. Currently, they have been retreated into the nearby mountains and are re reorganizing their troops. That's the current status. Now on to the mission objective. According to our reports, the G Army is mopping up the Dolet troops in the mountain region. We're to make a landing at Lapin Beach. We're to eliminate the remaining G Army within the city and liberate it ASAP. Afterwards, Seed members will intercept any G Army forces trying to make their way into the city from the mountain region. So, what are we supposed to do? Seed candidates are to eliminate the G Army inside the city. Sounds important. Sounds boring. So, what you're saying is we do all the little dirty work? <sighs> oh, it's hardly needed, needed to be said, but... To, the order to withdraw takes priority. Do not forget. We're almost there. 
We anticipate a battle as soon as we disembark. Just be prepared. That's all. Any questions? Talk to Quistus. Okay. Um, for this option, you want to avoid talking to Quistus at all costs. However, you can talk to your other members, other members of your team, talking to Cypher or Zell. So, let's talk to Zell first. First real battle. I'm getting pretty nervous. Better not piss in your pants. <laughs> ha! You talking to me? <laughs> uh, bastard! Okay, enough talk. We'll be landing pretty soon. Get ready. Roger. Well then, Squall, go see what's going on outside. Okay. Good, because it's my order. If you, uh, refuse to do this order, then points will be deducted from your final score. So, obey his orders. He is the leader, after all. Central Square. Be sure to equip your GF before you head into battle. Will do. Leave. Let's move out. Okay, speaking of GFs, uh, if there's uh, certain party members that are currently not active in the party, what you can do is uh, switch any sort of junction configuration with an active party member. So I'm going to go ahead and switch Quistus's uh, configuration to Zell. So that way, he has uh, all of Quistus's uh, configurations and uh, GFs currently equipped. So, there we go. We don't really need to manage the menus all that much. Okay, um, as far as Cypher is concerned, he, I believe, can function a junction of GF. Though I could be wrong on that. Yes, you can. Just keep in mind that uh, Cypher... Cypher won't be able to do very much on his own. So just give him a GF, so that way he can actually do something. Funny enough, for the longest time, I never knew how to pronounce Cypher's name correctly until I played Kingdom Hearts 2. In which case, I finally learned his proper pronunciation. For the longest time, I've always called him Shafir. Where is an H in his name? But whatever, that's uh, Cypher. <laughs> that's a pretty funny story how we've always called him uh, Shafir for whatever reason. By we, I mean my sister and myself when we played this game. Okay, I think everyone is good to go as far as junctioning is concerned. So since we uh, 
transferred the junctions from uh, Quistus to Zell, Zell also gets his hands on uh, all the magic that Quistus has drawn. So, that's pretty nice. Make sure everything is running, everything's good. Perfect. Let's go. Mission time begins now. And again, do not talk to anyone throughout the course of the mission. However, it is still a good idea to save your progress as much as humanly possible. Because you never know what's going to happen. Sometimes you may end up getting overwhelmed, but speaking of overwhelmed, here comes the cavalry. Say hello to the Galavanian soldiers. These are your standard uh, grunts and the uh, run-of-the-mill kind of uh, enemies. Again, you can draw from these guys, and they have uh, several different spells that you can draw from them. From Thunder, Blizzard, Fire, and also Cure. One of the requirements for uh, getting a high rank on the seed exam is defeating a certain number of enemies throughout the course of this mission. So, in order to uh, get the highest rank possible, what you have to do is defeat 75 enemies or more. 75 or more enemies throughout the course of the mission. If you defeat any less than that, then uh, your rank will be uh, lowered. So that is something to keep in mind. Okay, uh, let's see. What should we go and uh, have and learn? Learn. Fire magic or ash. That sounds like a pretty good idea to have and learn at this point. Alright, let's go! Hmm, what's this? Hello, Calvary! Welcome! <laughs> hmm, struck first. Look out, it's C! Whenever you enter a battle, you can, uh, sometimes you may initiate a, uh, preemptive strike. So what that means is all three of your party members who are active have their ATV gauge charged to their absolute maximum. If struck first, then, uh, enemies will immediately start attacking you. However, the third condition is just a normal battle. You just start charging your ATV gauge, along with everyone else. The central square is up ahead. Hey, all of you Galilean cowards out there! Come out and show your faces! Don't leave me hanging now! Damn it, Cypher. What an idiot! <laughs> no kidding. <laughs> Always charging ahead like a raging bull. Alright. Finally made it to the central square. Time to secure the area. This should be a simple task. So let's get that going. Get on the way. Really deep. There is one more thing that's worth noting, too, and that is, if you execute a draw command, there is a possibility where the draw will actually fail if you lose your turn. However, uh, the odds of that are fairly low. There may be more. Alright, I want you guys to scout the area for enemies. Aww, puppy! Oh, cute. Alright, let's go ahead and scout the area. We may end up finding some people here, so let's go! Go ahead and stop all 
Bowser because, well, it is one of my junctions. There we are. Nicely done. I think that's everyone. So that's pretty sweet. I think that's all of them. Great. Let's return to Cypher and report in. Well then, we're on standby till the enemy comes. Stand by. How boring. Oh, too cute. I want him. Oh. Oh my. Sounds like it's starting. Bring it on! Aw, get out of here! Scram! You bastard! Hey, Galabalian soldiers! What are you waiting for? Come and show me what you got! <laughs> is it me or is Cypher's hair glitching? Nothing. The hell? Man, now this is what I call boring. This ain't right, man. Still keeping us waiting? This ain't right. I know, Zell. I know. By the way, if you try to leave the area before uh, receiving your next order, points will be deducted from your final score upon completion of the exam. So, that is something that you need to keep in mind. That's it! I can't take it anymore! What is this? Some kind of dog training? Oh my, speaking of dog. Looks like we got trouble. Hmm, some soldiers are sneaking up towards the mountainside. It's the enemy. What the hell are they doing? Hey, what is that up there? Looks like some sort of radio tower. Our next destination. But that's against orders. Weren't you just saying how bored you were? Squall? I stand by the captain's decision. Captain's decision? You want to wreck some, uh, I can't read that fast enough. It's a good opportunity to test out my training. Thanks to you, I feel like I could take on anyone, even if they do fight dirty like you. You'll thank me when the time comes. What the hell? I thought you guys didn't get along. You're like all bloody buddy now. Listen, this ain't no ordinary battle. It's an exam, an important one. I'm telling you, we have to stick to orders. Then you stay here. I don't need any Boy Scouts. What was that? Don't take him seriously, Zell. Cypher, if we're going to go, let's hurry. The enemy is heading for the facility. We, Squad B, are to secure the summit. Move out. All right. Fine. All right. Onward to our next destination, which is the summit and the facility that lies at the very end of the summit. So, let's go. Onward to bigger, better adventures. Hello there, Mr. Soldier. Soldier, soldier. Marry me. Wait, why the hell am I singing a freaking nursery rhyme? Whatever. 
die. <laughs> There's another one added to the total. I think we defeated at least uh, four or five so far up to this point. But again, we uh, really, really need to defeat a whole bunch of them in order to receive the max rank possible. Also, I'm going to ignore that guy and that guy for a reason. Uh, who are you? Don't worry, we're seed candidates. We've been dispatched by Garden. So what's going on up here? The Galvanian soldiers have entered the communication tower. On top of that, that place has always been a nesting ground for monsters. If you guys are going up, be careful. Help! Oh dear. Looks like we got trouble. Trouble with a capital T. Listen up. The finishing blow determines the experience. Save it for me. So basically what Cypher is saying is whoever delivers the final blow will receive the most experience out of everyone. So if uh say a enemy uh is able to uh if an enemy drops like say 300 experience the uh person who delivers the final blow will receive the full experience while the others will only receive a fraction will only receive a fraction of the experience it's not that big of a fraction though is God, like Fire Raga, and uh, stuff of that nature. Monsters, huh? That sucks. More fun for us. Come on. Fun, please. Ooh, that doesn't sound good. Anyway, um, I believe at this point, since uh, we learned the card command, we can now assign it. Card is a very, very useful command to have. It honestly is. It's like one of the most useful commands to have in the entire game. So I think I'm going to go ahead and change out one of these things. As far as what? Not too sure. I'm thinking uh, either draw or item. I think draw is going to be the first to go. Anyway, what card does is, as the name suggests, it turns enemies into cards and this does have a chance to fail but if it succeeds it will turn an enemy into a card but you do lose out on experience but if you want to uh, gain gill extremely quickly outside of paychecks then you'll uh, have to uh what am i trying to say i don't even remember 
So anyway, uh, cards are important. If you want to gain gil quickly, then mastering the card skill is pretty vital, especially early on. Okay, here we go. And that's basically card. Sometimes it can uh, end up failing you on you, and uh, a lot of times it will succeed. In fact, I may try to show this off now. There are some enemies of which you cannot turn into cards, though. Primarily, bosses. Ooh, fire claws. The limit break for Cypher. No! This is something else that I have not mentioned, and that is, unlike all other characters in the game, Cypher Limit Break is different amongst all others. Meaning that uh, he can activate his Limit Break sooner than any other character. So, when a character is like at yellow health, so in other words their health is low, then they'll, they can have a chance to activate their Limit Break. But, for Cypher, the uh, amount of health he has left in order for him to be able to execute his limit break is higher. I believe it's roughly 80% or less? If not, it's probably 70%. I can't remember. The generator is up and running. No problem with the boosters. What the hell are they doing? Cable disconnection confirmed. Beginning exchange process. Roger. Repairs? What the hell's that about? Who cares? This must be your first real battle, you scared. No way. I don't know. I try not to think about it. I love battles. I fear nothing. The way I look at it, as long as you make it out of a battle alive, you're one step closer to fulfilling your dream. What? Your dream? You have one too, don't you? Sorry, but I'm going to pass on that subject. Yo, let me in on it too. Mind your own business. Frickin' hell. What's the matter, Zell? Swatting flies? Damn you! There you are. Oh, who's that? Hey, it's the girl who we helped out before. Oh dear, quite a rough landing. But I can see that you're okay. Are you Squad B? Yes, we are. What's your name? Wait a minute. You're the guy who showed me around, right? Thanks. I don't get so lost anymore. Oh, yeah. I haven't told you my name yet. I'm a messenger. Name's Celphine from Squad A. Or I think it's pronounced Selfie. Yeah, it is Selfie. <laughs> Oops. Okay. The squad captain Cypher, right? Where is he? Over there. <laughs> One of these days, I'm going to tell you about my romantic dream. <sighs> this sure is tough. Captain, wait up. What are you waiting for? Come on, come on! Well, that's the thing. Um, do not jump down from this mountain. Take the long way around. Trust me. If you jump from the mountain, that's more points lost. Those are more points deducted from your score. And trust me, you're going to need every single point that you can get. So at this point, uh, Cypher has left the party temporarily. Uh, 
Well, that sucks. You can't really turn uh, one of these soldiers into a card. Oh well. By the way, since Cypher has left the party, there will be no way you can uh, have him back in your party for the remainder of the game. So because of that, any TS or any sort of junction that he has had equipped, they're automatically unequipped. So at this point now, if we uh, don't select GF and instead look here, Shiva is now selectable again, so that's pretty nice. By the way, when I said uh, something about compatibility being uh, invisible earlier, I was wrong. It's actually listed here. Let's see, who would be best for uh, Shiva? That would be Squall. Either Squall or Quistus. Since uh, the latter is not here, might as well grab Shiva. <sighs> Sorry. Thought I had a loogie in the back of my throat. Okay, what should we equip instead? Uh, I think we're good with fire for the time being. Uh, we have six cure. And also some scan and thunder spells. So, I think we're good there. What took you so long? It would have been much quicker if you just jumped. Much quicker, please. You wouldn't normally jump off a cliff, okay? Ain't that right, Squall? Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, I guess so. You wouldn't normally jump like that. <laughs> I, I don't know. Well, anyway. Well, let's get going. Has everyone equipped a GF? You haven't forgotten, have you? No, I haven't. Speaking of uh, equipping a GF, now that the selfie has joined the party, we can now give her a GF as well. So we might as well give her a Shiva since that's the only one we have, have left on standby. So as easily as you can equip a GF, you can also unequip a GF the same exact way. So, yeah, there you go. So this is the communication tower. Sure is big. Yes it is. Ah! ah! Cowards! Hey! It's like leave me alone. The captain's getting away. So we should proceed after him. After we fight some more enemies. Did he go up? Hey, Squad B, Captain! Well, anyway, before we head up, head up the tower, it's a good idea to just sit here and farm enemies for a while. Now we can rack up your kill count and get as many uh, kills as you possibly can. As you level up and get stronger, you will be able to take out the enemies more and more quickly. Just, again, keep in mind, they will get stronger as you get stronger, too. Hmm, blind. Okay. Well, this is interesting. With certain, uh, draw points, some characters will not be able to learn certain spells. So, for example, Zell is unable to stock blind, so you have to choose either Squall or Selfie. Selfie. I always call her Selfie again. Like I've been calling her for years. I seriously wonder why her name is known as Selfie. Like, a selfie. On a cell phone. I don't get it. It's weird. By the way, you can take as long as you would like to uh, go about here and try to level up as much as humanly possible, gather some more magic, equip a few junctions, Gain some level ups for not only yourself but also your GFs as well. 
work on leveling up some of their abilities. And the grind here can be a bit long, but trust me, it will be worth it. Oh, hello, we have a new enemy. Basically, he has the same little regular spells as opposed to uh, alongside the uh, regular soldier here. But uh, he is a little bit stronger because of the fact that uh, he has a ranged weapon, he has a gun, which he will use to attack him. of the limit break, you can uh, take you through a, a certain number of spells. And for, uh, you can choose to cast the spell a certain number of times, or uh, not cast them at all and try to do over and go for another one. I never actually got in Selfie's uh, limit break before. And I have no idea how that works, but uh, from what I've seen, it should be a pretty simple process of uh, just... Just a simple process of uh, playing a slot machine and praying to God that you get a spell that you want. By the way, I believe the number of kills that you need to get apply only to regular soldier enemies. I'm probably just going to keep drawing the fire as much as I possibly can for Squall until uh, he's completely maxed out. Just so that way he has the largest number of fires as humanly possible. Gotta love them random encounters, am I right? <laughs> the stronger the enemy that you defeat, the more experience you will receive. That goes without saying for any hero if you ever. Ooh, nice critical hit. If the screen flashes, then you play the critical hit on the enemy. And whenever you land a critical hit, you will be able to deal a lot more damage to the enemy as opposed to normal. And I believe what uh, affects your ability to deliver critical hits is... What affects it is luck. If it's not luck, then it's probably something else in my way. So there we are. Another enemy down. Or the next one. A freak has leveled up. Nice. Oops, wrong folder. I have to select this one. <sighs> Again with that frickin' Boogie! Thankfully, while you're inside this radio tower, you'll fight nothing but the soldiers as well as the big red guys. I really don't know what the red guys are called, but, uh, anyway... Uh, 
I guess I'll just sit here for a while and grind as many enemies as I possibly can. It's also a good idea to stockpile on as many, uh, as much magic as we possibly can carry from these guys. There's plenty to go around. And if you're running low on HP, uh, throw down a cure spell. That'll, uh, heal up, heal up a good amount of HP. And if you're not really, if you don't have any cures whatsoever, what you can do instead is use an item such as a potion. I don't know if, uh, you have any potions right now. But anyway, uh, as we go about the game, we will be able to find more and more items. In fact, we can even buy items from shops, too. As I stated uh, earlier on, both times are so short that uh, most actions are here. Draw is one of those actions. In order to execute a draw, it usually takes about uh, three seconds, not roughly two seconds for the animation to fully complete, and then you uh, get your hands on the. Uh, then you get your hands on the. Uh, ability of what you've drawn. But, uh, of course, there's always that possibility where you could end up failing to draw from an enemy. Usually that happens if, uh, your magic isn't high enough, or if, uh, or if the enemy ends up dying before you can draw from them. Which can happen quite often, if you're not careful. Still got a ways to go, though. Still have no idea how many enemies I've uh, defeated up to this point. And as I've mentioned before, it's a good idea to just uh, save after a certain number of enemies that you've defeated. And if you're running low on HP, again, save progress immediately and then try to heal yourself. So that way, you can get back on your feet nice and quickly. By the way, uh, there is one more thing worth noting, and that is, when it comes to compatibility of your GFs and the characters that you're using them with, this also can determine uh, how many of certain spells you'll be able to draw from an enemy. It's mostly random, but the higher the compatibility, the more likely you're going to draw a lot of spells of which you're looking for. Trust me, you want to do this. And try to equip uh, a GF to the right character, so that way their compatibility is at their absolute best. And again, uh, when drawing magic, it's, it's the best idea to just prioritize uh, drawing magic of which you have junctions on. So, for example, we have a uh, Blizzard of Fire put to squall via junction. There we go. Another enemy down. At least at this point in the game, we uh, are in pretty good shape. And, uh, again, uh, okay. So, uh, looks like we have four potions to start off with, along with a couple of Phoenix Downs, some remedies, and we also start with a tent. Basically, how a tent works, in order to be able to use these, you have to be out on the field, like the overworld field, not in any sort of towns or dungeons. If you are inside a dungeon or in a town, you will not be allowed to use a tent. But tents are very, very useful items. Meaning you can uh, use a tent to fully heal yourself. So they kind of act like an elixir. 
in a sense, but again, they only are available for the field, so their uses are limited. But still, it may not be a bad idea to sell off the tents if you're not going to be using them. And another item type we have here is known as ammo, like normal ammo and shotgun ammo. That is for later. That is for another character who we will later recruit into our band of party members in the fun where the fun never ends. Pretty much. Here we go. It's also not a bad idea to try uh, rearranging your uh, junction abilities every now and again and uh, see if you can uh, fu activate a junction for a particular character and enhance their abilities even further. So right now, since uh, Squall has the maximum number of fire abilities he can carry, his strength is now uh, 29, but if I change the spell to something else, or remove it entirely, then his strength stat drops. <sighs> okay, I think we're good here. I'm gonna go ahead and save one more time. Wrong slot. Thankfully, it doesn't take too long to load up uh, a game folder or a memory card in the original PS1 release. By the way, if you want to save progress in the original PS1 release, you do need a memory card. Memory cards are memory units that you would insert into the system. In this, these things were godsends of items that you would uh, need in order to save progress in old games. So, for example, a controller pack for Nintendo 64 is a memory card for you. A lot of games didn't really use the controller pack, primarily the first party games, but some of the second party and third party games did use the controller pack for means of save data or storing uh, time trial data or something of that sort. Any sort of data that needs to be saved or typically stored on a memory unit. The last console that I know of that had a memory unit of any sort was the original Xbox 360, believe it or not, between the original models and the Elite model. The Slim models did away with those uh, memory units completely and primarily stuck with the uh, hard drive storage and USB. And wrong slot. Dang it. Yeah, it's kind of weird that the Xbox 360 is the last uh, console to have uh, memory units, like memory cards. But for the most part, all save data, data is stored via the hard drive. learned. I believe it was for a free. Yes, it was. Sweet. So now we have a new menu ability, Fire Magic RF, which is a refinery. All right, for uh, if free, what I'm going to have him learn is probably Elemental Defense Junction. So this way we can equip an Elemental Defense of some kind. By the way, you can quickly scroll from one character to another by pushing R1 or L1. 
So this also works with the uh, regular party members as well. Ju when on the junction screen or anything of the sort, between active party members and inactive ones, with the exception of Cipher at this point in the game now. Just saying. Next, please. Hello, you. I'm Guru Larry. And I'm about to do some fucked up. Oh, God, I put you back in the worst way possible. Oh, dear. Uh, oh, dear. All I can say is I am not British. I never have had any sort of British lineage in my family. So, I have no way of pronouncing British terms in terminology. <laughs> well, okay, maybe I can try, but still, just saying that not me. I do have some uh, German lineage in my family, where some of my family members know German. Maybe some French, too? I don't know how to pronounce some things in certain languages, but uh, I don't know very many languages other than English. I do know like very little bit of Spanish, like very, very little, like only a few words in Spanish. Uno, dos, tres, cuatro, cinco, six, seis, something to that extent. I also know uh, Gracias and Renata. And also uh, Buenos Dias. Other than that, that's uh, basically all the words I know in Spanish. Like I said, my vocabulary is in Spanish. I have no interest in learning uh, other languages at this point in time. If I really want to sit down and learn a language, I really want to learn Japanese. I want to learn how to speak Japanese, how to read Japanese. Just so I could uh, shout every curse word in the dictionary in Japanese. <laughs> just kidding. But no, just so uh, I can expand my vocabulary further. And uh, who knows, uh, some places actually look for uh, people who can speak multiple languages, primarily English and Spanish. So, there. There's something uh, else you can do. As far as me, I'm not really looking for learning any sort of languages right now. I'll just stick with what I have. Thunder. You're gonna be using those probably all the time. Alright, and we got cottage. So, what do cottages do? Well, they act exactly like tents, but are way better. They're the, they have the same effect as tents, plus they restore all GF's health and bring them back from the dead. So, if any of them have fallen, you can use a cottage to bring them back to life relatively easily. So, there is one other thing that's worth noting too, and that is with the uh, with save points, they uh, do not uh, they don't restore your health upon touching them. It's not like uh, either future Final Fantasy titles or uh, Kingdom Hearts. So, that's kind of a but, uh, oh well. The 
primary function of a cave point is just to give you the ability to save progress. And that's what really matters most when it comes to this game. Because if you get a game over, then unfortunately you will have to go back to your previous save point. And if you haven't saved in a while, this can be really, really annoying and frustrating. And if you want to rage quit, especially after doing like a three hour plus grind, haven't saved it forever, and then all of a sudden you have an enemy completely demolish them. So, there's that. Save often, and whenever you see a save point, save your progress and make a beeline for that save point as soon as possible. Trust me, you want to do it. Your life may depend on it. And so will your sanity, too. I really wish uh, Zell could turn these regular soldiers into cards, but unfortunately, you can't do that. In order to get cards of these particular people, you have to uh, do uh, a bit of rough monster grinding and turn those monsters, those specific monsters, into cards. And you also have to pray that uh, those monsters will then turn into the card that you're looking for. Again, all the information for all the cards that you want found on the Final Fantasy with That's basically where I got all my information from, especially when it comes to the seed exam. Because with this shit, who's gonna figure all this out on their own? Unless they dive into the game's code. In which case, uh, what? Why would you do that? Maybe to learn more about the game and how it works with certain mechanics and everything. Down to every last episode. Imaginable, but uh, I mean, no, that's not necessary. It just isn't. Okay. Hmm. I have no idea how many uh, enemies I've defeated up to this point. So, uh, one thing you could do is. Remember your starting level upon beginning the mission, and use that as a means of an indicator of how many uh, soldiers you've taken down. So at this point, it might be a good idea for me to at least uh, try to strive for everyone being at level 15 by the time I proceed on to the next fight, with the next major uh, plot point. So, uh, not really too sure what else to mention. Still, level 15 is a pretty good indicator of uh, showing your progress, how far you've come, and how many enemies you've defeated. It doesn't tell you exactly how many, but still, it's a pretty good number. Pretty good indicator. So, you can hear push yourself even further. One other thing you could do instead is instead of waiting until level 15 for everyone, you could uh, wait until level 20. That's another uh, level you can uh, wait for too. But again, it will take forever. Because as you gain more and more experience, uh, it will take more and more experience to be able to level up. So that is something to keep in mind. I'm probably going to keep going until I've reached at least level 15 and see how many enemies I've defeated from there. I might not uh, be able to have uh, defeated enough enemies. Also, new achievement, magician. So, as I've mentioned before, in order to earn the magician achievement, you need to draw from enemies 100 times. It's a bit of a blind achievement, but trust me, it is well worth the effort. Well, okay, maybe not. It's more like a badge box. If anything else. 
fantastic. So, if you happen to have the magic man equipped as well as the draw command, I don't happen to uh, choose the draw itself or something. Even if you have uh, that particular magic stop, so long as you use the draw command to use the spell from that enemy, you can uh, use it for yourself and not uh, take away any uh, magic from uh, your stock. So, that's pretty nice. Okay, um, how's everyone doing? Uh, Selfie can, uh, use a little bit of healing herself. Everyone else seems fine for now. And upon reloading your save file, whatever, uh, status effects or, uh, HP and whatnot you have, uh, inflicted on you at the time, or how much HP you have, will be the same amount as, as you save the progress before. So I figure I'd throw that out there as well. So, uh, while we're sitting here grinding for a bit, um, I wanted to go ahead and talk about that, uh, story I was talking about earlier. I brought it up briefly very brief, where, as I've mentioned before, the original PS1 release of the game, I don't have it in my possession, but it's technically my sister's copy. It's my sister's copy of the game, and uh, how we got the game itself is pretty interesting. Um, many years ago, when the, I believe my father had a uh, PlayStation 1, so we were able to get our hands on a new PlayStation game whenever we went over to his house. So my sister and I uh, got a game and uh, enough money to get one game for ourselves. I picked up a uh, Spyro Year of the Dragon for a PS1 and I picked up my own game. So uh, while I was watching her play, I was interested in the game myself, but, uh, I mean, my sister was a little hesitant on, uh, letting me play the game because of the fact that the game itself does have some strong language and, uh, some other suggestive themes. I mean, we were, we were kids at the time, and, uh, language in video games was a bit of a rarity, and even if... If uh, a game did have language in it, it's usually pretty mild, if anything. But this game, yeah, this does have some pretty strong language, but not once have I encountered anyone saying shit or fuck. So, there's that. I think the maybe the strongest language word that you'll hear here is maybe the uh, uh, bastard? Language is not that bad. Not in this game. I would really like it if uh, these guards would uh, also be here. But sadly, that doesn't seem to be the fact. That doesn't seem to be the case. Uh, it sucks, but that's the way it is. Drawing in scans. <laughs> Not like I really need scans. In fact, scans aren't really the most useful spell in the game. I mean, they're useful for identifying information as opposed to enemies, but that's about it. It's really the only uh, means of using scans, other than using it as a junction ability. I mean, you can jump in scans and get away with it perfectly fine, but, uh, still, scans primary use. Oh, hello. Okay, forget what I said about not being able to cast care. You can only do it from the blue bar, not the red ones. That would make sense. Still 
idea to try to draw as many cure spells as you possibly can. So that way you have them for later and ready to go on standby. Funny enough, during my early playthroughs when I played this when I was younger, I did not uh, really utilize magic all that much, if at all. I rarely used any sort of magic because I could never figure out how to use it properly. It wasn't until years later when I grew up and found out, hey, magics are OP as crap and are super freaking useful, like more so than anything you could possibly imagine and essentially turns yourself into God. I am dead serious when I say that too. It is really, really damn powerful. Another thing you could do to make these uh, grinding sessions go faster is to uh, set the balance to be as high as possible. That way, all the ATV data will uh, charge up super quickly. However, this does apply to everyone, not just you. So, that is something. What's also pretty funny is that uh, sometimes when you're casting spells or doing certain actions, the camera actually changes. But if you interrupt this uh, camera action change, then uh, upon completing the action or uh, completely confirming your menu selection, then the camera angle goes back to uh, the action one. Which is pretty nice. Oops, wrong slot again. Here we go. Hmm. Still at a pretty decent pace. Still, we're only at level 12 and we still got a ways to go as far as defeating enemies are concerned in order to get up to a decent level of level 15. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and draw this for selfie. So anyway, the uh, draw points, once you draw from them, you won't be able to draw from them again for quite some time. And again, the whole uh, drawing thing is... Uh, if you draw the right number of spells, you should be able to get through the game with relative ease. Get that many cures for swallowing. But again, like I said earlier, you can bypass the system completely by uh, by means of uh, just simply using the magic booster, which I'll probably show off when I get ready to end the stream. Which uh, I'm probably gonna worry about ending it uh, not right away, but more so. Uh, Ooh, hello, Doom. That sounds awesome. Anyway, uh, as far as when I'm planning on ending this, um, I'm not 100% sure at this point in time. I do plan on uh, possibly ending this like after our uh, seed exam is complete and we begin the real part of the game within uh, the next session. So for right now we're gonna just continue uh, continue working on that grind and uh, just defeat as many enemies as we possibly can so that way that way we can get as high of a score as humanly possible. Another thing that's worth noting, too, is that you should not be afraid to uh, swap out magic for better and more powerful magic as you go further and further into the game. So, that is something else to keep in mind, too. Wrong slot again. 
by the way, for a number of save slots per, uh, within slot one and slot two, you have up to 30 blocks that you can save your data onto. Not sure what that was about. So in essence, you have 60 save files that you can pull from at any time between the two slots. So, if you are worried about points of no return, make a new save as often as possible. But for me, I'm going to try to keep the number of, <coughs> number of save files that I have here to at least two. One for the stream itself and one for backup purposes. So if something goes horribly wrong, then I can easily redo it. the Steam re-release of the game. I just wish that Square Enix did this officially. Technically speaking, this same sort of problem also occurred when they re-released Final Fantasy VII on Steam, where they only used the MIDI files instead of the actual music from the PlayStation release. Square Enix made an official update and changed the music from the MIDI over to the PlayStation release officially. Not given to Final Fantasy VIII, which is kind of stupid. So we kind of have to rely on mods and unofficial means of uh, restoring the game's actual audio. But hey, I mean, whatever floats your boat. If you want to play with the MIDI files, then that's fine by you and fine by me as well. Not gonna stop you from uh, making your choices. For me, I'm sticking with the original PlayStation music because that's the music I love the most, and that's what uh, that's what really gets me going. It's uh, the jingles that the, are the most memorable because the mini just doesn't sound nearly anywhere near as good as the original PlayStation. Because the original PlayStation has more uh, story. Actually, uh, there is a reason why the MIDI files even exist in the PC releases of uh, Final Fantasy VII and VIII. And that was back in the day, uh, high quality audio files were, were really difficult to uh, get working properly on older hardware. And I mean like really, really old hardware. But nowadays with the re-releases of the game, you can uh, easily just, uh, you, can, you have more than capable hardware, even the uh, built-in uh, audio, built-in audio with your motherboard of all things, to uh, be able to, uh, be able to get high quality audio from your games of any sort. Just plug it into an audio jack on your motherboard and you're perfectly good to go. Uh, let's see here. I think I'm going to have Squall use Cure on himself. And Selfie, you too. Junctioning a Cure spell for yourself is honestly not a bad idea. But uh, again, if you use it often, you may want to reconsider. So, if you are going for uh, junctioning a cure spell to say, junction your HP to make it even higher, then, uh, then consider using a lower cure, uh, cure spell, such as regular cure, 
for Kira. If Kira got sold, would you need more medals? Such as, uh, when... Such as when you are running low on HP and you have no potions of that sort of left. So again, magic has, uh, limited uses and, uh, you don't have MP in this game at all. So whatever number of magic spells you have are the number of spells you have. Simple as that. There is one other detail I kind of left out when it comes to uh, picking up the games when uh, my sister and I uh, picked up uh, a game for the PlayStation, and that is we actually got our games at a local Toys R Us. Believe it or not, though, Toys R Us is no longer in the United States, but I do hear rumors that it is going to be coming back under a new uh, sort of label. So many, uh, so many different stores such as Walmart and Amazon that also offer toys, even if the, you can buy them online. And they're technically cheaper. Like if you're searching for a certain toy, then uh, that toy is more than likely going to be the most expensive at Toys R Us over anywhere else. Almost up to level 14 for everyone, 13 for Zell and Squall, 12 for Selfie. Seriously, I can never get over the name Selfie. Who I've always mistakenly called Selfie. Why Selfie? No idea. I seriously have no idea how many enemies we have. I lost track a long time ago. I apologize that we're taking so freaking long just grinding it. But again, it's wise to grind as much as possible, so that way you can finish the world ahead. And drawing from enemies, again, is very, very important. It really is important. Especially when it comes to bosses. And this upcoming boss that we're going to be fighting soon is one of those bosses where it's important to draw from that boss the good news is, uh, when it comes to, uh, defeating enemies, there is a very good possibility that you're going to get some item drops from them. So, at the very least, uh, the items can be useful by means of, by means of healing yourself or, uh, by others. <laughs> I just 
wish this would uh, go a little bit faster. In fact, I could uh, technically do that if I wanted to, but uh, honestly, I don't think that's such a good idea right now. As much as I hate to admit it, but that's just the way it is. iteration of Final Fantasy having a character named Sid, Sid is always a different person within each game. So that is something to keep in mind. So even if the character in say Final Fantasy VIII is named Sid, that particular character is not the same with like say Final Fantasy VII or Final Fantasy IX, X, X2, etc, etc. Just saying. Each iteration of Sid is a different incarnation. And it's a trope that has continued on to this very day. There are several other tropes as well within the Final Fantasy series that are also uh, are continuing even to even to today with the most recent release of Final Fantasy XV. But again we'll cross that road when we get to it. What's uh, even weirder is that the uh, enemies can use as much magic as they want. They will never run out. So, that's kind of unfortunate. Hmm. Let's see, how good is everyone right now? Hmm, pretty good. With the exception of Celsi. She could use a little help herself. If I can use the right... Select the right person and heal the right person, too. <sighs> so, the best way to grind is just run around in circles near a save point. So, that way, upon completion of a battle, you can uh, save your progress immediately if you want to. Or if you're feeling you like living dangerously, you can instead uh, keep uh, fighting a little bit more. Now it's small, fully stocked up. It's honestly not a bad idea to start working on self. 
Obviously, too. You can also work on Zell if you happen to have the draw command uh, available. Uh, so it's not bad. You have to do that. All right, everyone leveled up. We're up to level 14. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna keep going for a little bit longer. Like I said, I'm gonna try to keep going until uh, everyone is up to at least level 15. Or at the very least, Zell and Squall. Selfie I'm not too sure about. Selfie unfortunately will be lagging behind quite a bit, but uh, that's alright. I'm not too sure how many cure spells are on Looks like he still needs some work on cure spells. But hey! Now's the time to name the way you draw. Well, draw. I'm kind of glad that it didn't return with future Final Fantasy titles and they went back, back to the standard MP system where you learn spells and uh, it costs MP to use. So that's pretty nice. As far as this game is concerned, you still have to deal with the draw system. Not even mods can change the system. Twenty four points. Yeah, I'm going to leave that off. Okay. It looks like Selfie doesn't have uh, very many or any specials whatsoever. But again, the whole special thing is her limit break. That will come into play later if her HP drops low enough. Another thing that's worth mentioning as well, and when it comes to this game, this is the first game in the series to introduce the concept of gun blades. And gun blades are what they sound like. They are a sword combined with a gun, such as a revolver or a pistol. Squall and Cypher are the only characters in Final Fantasy VIII to wield a... They're the only ones who wield a uh, gun blade. By the way, there is the thing that's worth noting. Oh my god, Luigi, why? It's gonna shoot out of my nose if I say certain words or phrases. That is super annoying. Awesome. 
New ability learned for GS. Let's see. What should I have you learn next? I think I'm gonna have him learn uh, magic plus 20%. As far as you, you're working on Doom and you are working on Elemental Defense J. There we go. We're almost done, folks. We're almost done with uh, grinding up to level 15. It's honestly not a bad idea to do some grinding every now and again, especially when you are uh, getting your butt handed to you on a silver platter when it comes to certain enemies. But again, enemies do level up with you as you are going about your adventure. So, again, keep this in mind as you're grinding. You may end up grinding a little too much and make your enemies a little too strong, but uh, I don't think it works like uh, where if you level up too much, then they become overwhelmingly powerful. They don't level up at the same pace as you, thankfully. It's just uh, enemies will uh, level up around the same sort of pace as you, but not quite. Just slightly slower. Okay, this should be enough to get uh, everyone up to level 15 at least. I know it will for small I'm not so sure about the uh, self But, uh, it's really not a great way to do that. Only save them for when you use that mode. Like, that's bosses. The reason why is because there is another little, uh, invisible mechanic when it comes to this game. But, again, that will come into play after the scene exam concludes. at level 14, so I think I'm going to go one more battle at the very least just to get her caught up to level 14, along with everyone else who's at level 15. Just so that way we are fully prepared, we defeated a good number of enemies. Again, I don't know how many we defeated up to this point, but hopefully it'll be enough to get the highest score. And if it's not, then... become more powerful. I could be wrong. Okay, uh, speaking of which, time to use some cures. One for you, you, and you. So basically everyone is healed up for the most part. Though not completely, but that's totally fine. We'll be perfectly fine as we head on up this elevator. I think we can take this lift up. Want to go up? Yes. Let's go. Wow, this lift is pretty cool. 
Don't get too excited or you'll fa fall like I'm really going to. <laughs> Major Biggs, there has been a report of a monster chief channel on top of the tower. And this is another Final Fantasy trope right here. There's always a character known as Biggs and Wedge. They are a big love letter to Star Wars, as they're referencing characters of the same name, with Gentiles and Biggs. So, yeah, that's pretty sweet. Major Biggs! Be quiet, I'm busy. This goes like this. Jeez, what's with these crappy old tools? And, and... Why do I have to make all the repairs? Ah! Sir, I'll check around while the repairs are, are being done. Let's see. Hmm, put this here and... This goes here and... There! It's complete! What's complete? Oh dear. That doesn't sound good. And oddly enough, we can move around during this separate piece. Albeit, we can't move very far, but still, we can move around just for funsies. you're doing huh likewise mister what do you think you're doing hey what's happened to all the soldiers down below they did wedge take care of these twerps wedge I uh well uh, I seem to be done here so I'll just be on my I'm leaving. Move it. Move, move. Sorry to crash the party. <laughs> Are you crazy? Just shut up. So here we go. Time to fight Biggs and Wedge. First up, we are fighting uh, Biggs himself. Prepare for the worst, you brats. Biggs and Wedge are essentially like super powerful uh, versions of uh, the regular G soldier as well as the elite soldier. Also, that question mark spell is Isuna. Isuna is. You use that to cure any status element for the most part. There are some spells that you won't be able to cure with uh, Isuna. But still, the are out there anyway. After we deal enough damage to Biggs, Witch should come in and try to help out Biggs. I'm gonna try uh, storing up enough uh, students. So that way I can have at least ten of them. I guess you can say he'll become my mate, both black and white mage. <laughs> Speaking of Wedge, Major Biggs! Have you finished the repair, sir? What is the enemy doing here? Wedge, where were you? No pay for this month. Should have stayed with me. Well, uh... <laughs> uh 
of sucks to be you, bro. I mean, uh, Wedge. Why did I say Zell? No idea. Anyway, um, you can just continue to deal as much damage as you can between Wit, Wedge, and Zig. And after a certain amount of HP drops from uh, either character, then the real fun will be And here it is! What the? <laughs> Say hello to Mr. Ballsack. Whatever the hell this thing is, he's ugly. I don't like it. What the hell is this? Yes, he's big, he's nasty, he's ugly as crap, he has Siren. Believe it or not, that is another GF. That's what I meant about the uh, brawling from bosses. Many bosses throughout the course of the game will have GF stored in them. Do not forget to draw from these bosses. If you forget, then we'll have to wait towards the very, very end of the game before you'll be able to get another shot of obtaining that particular boss's GF. So, the best way to distinguish what is uh, a regular spell and what's not a spell and what sounds like something that could be related to a GF itself is if you cannot cast the spell, then it's a GF. And another really strong clue of distinguishing whether it's a whether it's a GF or not is if it sounds like a spell, then it's a spell. If it's not, well then, well then, it's not gonna actually be a spell. Why did I select card? I'm crazy. Whatever, it's fine. There is one more uh, point that you need to take into account when it comes to the seed exam itself. And that is uh, how many times you run away. It is possible to run away from battles. And sometimes it may not be a bad idea just to simply take a run for it and fight for it on a deck. But the problem is, uh, if you run away too often, then uh, your score will unfortunately drop. And when it comes to the seed exam itself, you cannot run away hardly ever. If you run away, like at all, this will affect your score negatively. There is one exception, that is, coming up very shortly, we will have no choice but to flee from battle. And that's the only time you'll be allowed to run away. If you run away any other time, this will affect your score negatively, big time.
be a bad idea. Sometimes it may be a good idea to try to scan the bosses through your findings so you can figure out the best way to attack what attacks to use when and also figure out how to counter stuff there before that. this boss for what seems like the longest time. It took us years to defeat this thing. Years. And this is like the first major boss, and the first major road boss that we're going to encounter. But uh, nowadays, he's not uh, much of a threat. He can be pretty deadly, but honestly, he's not that bad. Just again, draw his GF before the battle ends. Otherwise, you won't be able to get him again until the very end of the game. I am dead serious when I say this too. Upon defeating the boss, you typically do not receive any experience for any characters, but you do receive some really good items. And a lot of AP for your GFs too. And here is our newest GF, Siren! Confirm and confirm. Squad B, Captain? Excuse me, I have new orders. All seed members and seed candidates are to withdraw at 1900 hours. Assemble at the shore. Withdraw? There are still enemies around. I know, but I'm just a messenger. And don't shoot the messenger. An order to withdraw takes priority. I don't want to miss the vessel. What time did you say? Like I said, all seed members and seed candidates are to withdraw at 1900 hours. Assemble at the shore. 1900 hours? We only have 30 minutes! You got 30 minutes to get down to the shore. Better run! Hey, wait for us! Who the hell does he think he is? Why don't you go ask him? Let's go. So at this point now, we need to make our escape and start heading towards the shore. And again, this is another one of those situations where if you run out of time, the game is over. What the hell's going on here? Those little twerps are the targets. Now go and destroy them! Oh dear, that doesn't sound friendly. Funny enough, you can save progress while you're in the middle of the time sequence. Just again, keep in mind that you are still timed. And even if you game over, then the time that you have left upon initiating the save will be the amount of time you have left. Oh dear. Oh man. That's not good. That's not a friendly face I want to see. Say hello to the mechanized spider tank. This bastard will be your major roadblock of, between you and the shore. And this is a boss who you need to defeat in order to uh, get past it. You need to make this fast as well. So, once again, just unleash your 3F fight, and pray to God you can kill him quickly enough. So, here is another very, very important mechanic, and that is the amount of time you have left upon doing this mission. Unlike last time, where the less time you have, the better you be, here, the more time you have upon completing it will give you a better score. The best time that you can get, the 
best score you can get for this is if you have 25 minutes before the reading of the slot, by the time you reach the shore, you will receive the best score possible. So if you're hard pressed for time, just go uh, ball to the wall and attack like crazy. Let's get the hell out of here! Select and start to uh, escape according to this configuration. But in actuality, it's actually L2 and R2. That's the way it was in the original PlayStation release. So now that he's out the way, now we need to get moving. I thought we already busted that thing up! Forget it, let's go! At this point, run like hell! Run for the hills, for the most part. Except here, at this particular screen, walk instead. If you run, then the screen will shake, stunning the entire party, and you'll be forced to fight the spider again. So at that screen in particular, walk instead, and walk from the beginning of the screen to the end. You can walk very easily by pushing and holding the circle button, and then moving in any direction. Now here's a very annoying part right here, and that is the bridge. God damn it! I was afraid that was gonna happen. Uh, well, I'm definitely not gonna be able to get the best score out of this. And what's worse is that uh, this is gonna waste even more time. One thing you could do is if you screw up, is you could intentionally throw the fight and let yourself get killed. Or you can reset the game. That can work too. The uh, soft reset. And reload your save just before uh, this spider uh, started chasing you. There is one of their very uh, unique bonus that you can get with this uh, exam, and that is if you manage to defeat this thing, and I mean this demon completely, and destroy it by draining all of its HP and make sure that it stays down, then you will get a massive bonus of 100 points towards the exam. So, uh, essentially what you had to do for the bridge section. Yeah, your dog! You also have to save the dog, too, by simply interacting with it, and it'll run. If you fail to save the dog, then you'll lose a lot of points for the exam. Another thing you could do is, uh, hide in the pub and wait for the spider to stop and just pass by. But really, you should not do that. Otherwise, you will lose a lot of points on your C score. Squad C, withdraw! Roger! Okay, we're almost at the end. Just got a little bit further left to go. Oh man, here he comes! Which is unfortunate. But 
With that, the seed examination is now pretty much completed. Now we just need to head back to Garden and report in to uh, Master Sid and receive our just reward. Cypher! How'd it go? Man, all they did was get in my way. Being a leader ain't easy. Safe? Of course I'm safe. Why the hell wouldn't he be? Good job. Where's Cypher? Over there. Just be back at Garden by sundown. You're free till then. Okay, dismissed. Awesome. Hey! Not again, man. There goes my ego. There goes Mr. Ego. Might as well walk it. Oh well. That's fine. We can use a little exercise anyway. Anyway, um, if you really want to preserve your rank, now that the examination is complete for the most part, we still have, uh, we still need to get back to Garden in order to receive the final results. So, it's honestly not a bad idea to just simply head back immediately. There we are. By the way, um, you can actually purchase a car and rent it while you're roaming around on the field, just keep in mind that uh, renting a car is not free. And it also runs on fuel, too. So if you run out of fuel, then uh, unfortunately, you're out of luck. The car won't be usable anymore. Alright. And with that, we are back in Garden. hoo -ah! Finally made it back. Seriously. Well, I guess we just wait for the test results. Till then, see you, Squall. See you. See you later, Zell. As I walk straight through your body. So at this point now, the rest of the party just splits off. And we just simply continue on our merry way once again. And I think at this point now, uh, we just, uh, head towards the elevator shaft, I think. Then again, maybe I'm supposed to take off my clothes? I don't remember for sure at this point in time, but, uh, either way, it's, uh, it's high time we, uh, figure out what the results are for this exam. I am really eager to see how well I did. <laughs> this is gonna be awesome. Mission complete! I think we did a pretty good job. The candidates are back safely, right? Although we didn't realize the Galabanian army was after the abandoned communication tower. We've just received word from Dolet Duncan. The Galab Galabian army has agreed to withdraw as long as the communication tower is repaired and the uplink remains operational. That sounds like reasonable enough terms. Well, in any case, Gal Galbadia is out of there. We couldn't... We could have made more money if they'd stayed and caused more ruckus. I wouldn't necessarily say that. How did it feel out there on the battlefield? It felt good, actually. To actually fight, it was a good feeling. That's the spirit, but don't let it go to your head. Okay, I believe at this point now, uh, you just, uh, simply walk around these guys and just head on up the stairs, head up to the elevator, and wait at the classroom in order to receive your test results. No matter what, upon completing this mission, you will pass with flying color, so, yeah, that's kind of a spoiler, but, hey, just saying. 
We wouldn't really be able to progress through the game if we uh, didn't uh, achieve the seed goal, am I right? I've been knocked out as well as uh, Twistus. So the more times we get knocked out, the more uh, pissed she will be. So, yeah. That's something to be on the lookout for, I guess. But uh, I don't think you really uh, have to worry so much about being knocked out and having to be scolded to death. Okay. So, I essentially went the wrong way, so oops, my mistake. Perhaps I'm supposed to talk to someone else here. Not too sure. Guess we'll find that out right now. The results for the exam should be announced soon. Just stick around here. Hey, you did pretty well. Thanks, dude. Of course, he's my best student. Aw, thanks, man. He's not very social, though. Okay, then. Unfortunately, we cannot use the directory at all. But, uh, as long as we stick around here, around the garden, we should be able to know, uh, the results of, uh, how well we did during the exam. But I think for the most part, we did, uh, perfectly fine. We were adequate. We defeated a large number of enemies. Hello, Cypher. It's been a while. Did you hear about the communication tower in Dolet? We would have been heroes if it weren't for that withdrawal order. You were only looking for a fight. My dear instructor, I'm hurt. Those are rather cruel words from an inspiring student. A mediocre instructor like you will never understand. Cypher, don't be so stuck on yourself. You'll take all responsibility for leaving the designated area. Isn't it the captain's duty to take the best possible action? Cypher, you'll never be a seed. Calling yourself a captain is a joke. Cypher's kind of pissed. What's up, Sid? Cypher? You will be disciplined for your irresponsible behavior. You must follow orders exactly during combat. But I'm not entirely without sympathy for you. I don't want you all to become machines. I want you all to be able to think and act for yourselves. I am... Hey, Master Sid, we have some business in your office. There are so many issues at hand here. What's up, Cypher? Absolutely nothing, huh? Seed shall not act beyond the exact wording of a contract. You are not a non-profit. We are not a non-profit organization. This incident will be hard, a hard-learned lesson for the Dolet Duncan. They'll know. Now they'll know to be more generous when hiring Seed. Wonder what that's about. <laughs> uh, I'm guessing some people just uh, really are for profit. All students who have participated in today's field exam report to the second floor hallway. I repeat, all students who took the field exam report to the second floor hallway. Oh dear. Looks like uh, it's time to head on up to the hallway and figure out uh, what score we received. <laughs> oh. I'll see you passed, along with myself of course. I guess hello, plot armor, main character. 
Can't exactly uh, kill the main character here. Well, technically you can't, but still, just saying. Sup. Said they are going to call out names one at a time. At this point now, I believe you just have to literally wait around a certain amount of time before the results are announced. Then again, I think if you try to leave, then the the results will be announced anyway, or you can't leave the room. Rage! Fujin was saying that it'd be all your fault if Cypher doesn't become a CD or C. She could be pretty scary, you know. Didn't you tell? Oh, yeah! See ya! Squall? Squall from Squad B, please step forward. That is all. Dismiss. <laughs> That's synchronization, though. Am I right? These are the four students that passed today's exam. First of all, congratulations. However, from now on, as a member of C, you will be dispatched all over the world. We are proud to introduce Seed Balam Gardens Mercenary Soldiers. Seed Soldiers are combat specialists. But that is only one aspect of Seed. When the time comes... Headmaster, it's almost time for the meeting. Please make this short. Seed is a valuable asset to Garden. It's its reputation is solely dependent on each of each one of you. Handle your mission with care. Is that what you wanted to say, sir? Here is your seed rank report. even if you don't stand out. Try to control your emotions a little. Dismissed. Whatever that means. Oh, Squall, let me give you this. It's a battle meter. Access the menu and you'll see battle report in the information section of the tutorial. It may come in handy for future battles. Thank you. Thank you for the battle meter. I believe if you don't receive this from uh, Headmaster Sid now, you may not get this for the remainder of the game. We'll talk privately one day. It is ex expected you will be using quite a number of GFs along the way. Be sure to ignore all the GF criticisms you hear from other gardens or military forces. Sure thing. I'm pretty sure with great power comes great responsibility. Seed, seed, seed! Yo, Squall, let's get back to class. What do you mean, why? Don't you remember what new seats members do? They give a speech in front of the entire class, and after that, the inauguration party. Sounds good to me. After 17 years of suffering, my chance has finally arrived. Oh, wh what, Squall? I'll be the ruler of this garden someday. Dreaming high, buddy. 
I'm sure you'll be able to make it someday if you put your mind to it. Hmm. An applause from Cypher. Now that is definitely something else. Who knew? And after that, we receive our report. So, Conduit is 90 points, Judgment is 100, Attack is 80. I don't think I defeated enough enemies, so that kind of sucks. Spirit is 70 points, Attitude is 80 points. So, I think Conduit is uh, how many times you've run away in battle. Judgment is... Uh, there are a lot of uh, terms of what they mean, but... Uh, I unfortunately didn't make a list of uh, what these terminologies mean and what they dictate in game. So unfortunately you kind of have to figure that out yourself. So our starting rank is 8. So that's not too bad. Not a bad start. As a seed member you will be paid a salary at regular intervals. The salary is based by seed rank. Seed rank goes up according to your actions in battle. Some actions will cause your rank to go down though. Keep this in mind as you go about the course of the game. Ha! Found you! Well, well, what do you think? My seed uniform. It's lovely. You should get changed too. You have that party to go to. Indeed. And I think next time we will be uh, partying until the freaking cows come home. For right now, though, we've been going on for over four hours. Almost four hours and ten minutes up to this point. So, I'm just going to go ahead and end things here for tonight. This is General Snivy with the Final Fantasy VIII playthrough. Thank you all so much for watching, and if you were able to attend the live stream live, thank you for attending. Next time in the next session, we're going to party like it's 1990 mother trucking nine. And also receive our first seed mission. <laughs> this is going to be a fun one and a fun adventure, let me tell you. And I am really looking forward to it. So once again, thank you all so much for watching. I hope you all enjoyed. See you all next time for when the fun in adventures of Final Fantasy VIII truly begin. See you all later.